Look, I'm not saying this shit now. We're recording. <laughs> Kill the count of five. What's going on, guys? Justin here, back with another episode of the podcast. Till the count of five. To my left, as always, Jason Pablo Castle. Uh, and yeah. I was not saying a damn thing about my wife. Let's, just, <laughs> let's establish that fact now. All right. Um, obviously, we missed last week. Uh, sorry about that. I had finals to take care of, and uh, obviously a ghost show, which you know we'll talk about later in the show. But we're back. Um, I know, huge, you've missed us, yeah. you've missed us. It had a huge, huge weekend. And yeah, which we're going to get to in just a second. We got to do some plugs. Yeah, we've got all kinds of plugs to do. So, um, we've both uh, been a part of this group for a little bit now. It's a group on Facebook called... And, and on Twitter Yeah, now. they're now on Twitter. They've, so, uh, go they, check Twitter out because they just started. Yeah, and we'll have all the links for that in the description below. Um, we'll have it plugged and everything else, but it's called Wrestling Matters to Us, and... It's it's a bunch of guys. Probably, I think there's over a thousand members, but uh, like it's pretty simple. Yeah, if wrestling matters to you, like go you, join the damn. You group. need to be in this group, and you can send one of us a message, or we can get you in contact with someone to get into the group. But uh, really fun group, just all wrestling stuff, and you know it's been pretty cool. And like not, I said, not all WWE. Stuff yeah, either. it's a lot of indie stuff. I mean, these guys really stuff. know what the hell they're talking about. But yeah, they some just, don't. Some wrestles. Yeah, they just started a Twitter page too, <laughs> so. Uh, uh, we'll plug that. All that'll be in the description below. But yeah, yeah, more plugs. Yeah, to the guy that got in the argument over Chase Owens and the Bullet Club. Fuck you. Yeah. Um. Anyway, so I'm also gonna plug one of my buddies because uh, I sold him some stuff the other day, and he's cool as hell. Anthony, um, who owns Heroes Headquarters in uh, Lynn Garden in Kingsport. Uh, he is your hookup for any kind of toys, that anything like GI Joes, Transformers. Uh, basically, if it's something that can be collected other than, like, Pops, because he doesn't do Pops, which, trust me. Which still which, saddens me. I know, I know. Yeah. But this dude has anything and everything. Go check Heroes Headquarters out. Also, as usual, I'm throwing this one out here again because he's my boy. And it's, damn, his podcast is awesome. Yeah, it's, Every it's one of sick. Them. Everyone, not just the ones that have Tony. The ones that have Tony are amazing because all and, that shit's and awesome. And he, he's been promoting us too. Like, there, there's, yeah, we've got some yeah. like cross so like, plugs going on. That's Robbie, really, really. Robbie cool. Cassidy has a the high risk radio thing podcast. It's awesome. Uh, he's had some of our NWA Smoky Mountain guys. Uh, you know, Tony's done like three episodes now. Um, Dylan Sizemore was just on there, and yep. they're actually going to do another one with Dylan and Robbie, and it involves Dylan actually being in the same room with Robbie. And they're going to talk and drink 48 PBRs or some shit while they're doing it. So and that shit's going to be... PBR. Get... We're going old school now. Oh, I'm ringing some redneck beer. Hold on. The, we have a live moment here. The Chase Owens ringtone. Oh, no, no, no. Or not Chase AJ Owens. God, for... I've done that twice now. All right. So, Pablo is now on the phone with his son, who uh, he is picking up, or has to get picked up from weightlifting, so we apologize for that. But, yeah, not Chase Owens, obviously, AJ Styles, twice I've done that. Pretty terrible. Uh, yeah. That sucked, by the way. Yeah, that was such shitty timing. What the fuck? We're going to keep rolling, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why would, we, uh, why would we stop the podcast now? Yeah, I mean, what the hell? Yeah. So, obviously, yeah, uh, check out Robbie's podcast. He's absolutely killing it. Like I said, we kind of got, like, some cross-plugs going because he's been plugging us, which is super cool of him. Um, you said you, you got another plug, don't you? Uh, you yeah, got a fourth? I'm gonna, yeah, I get to the other four. I was going to mention this about Robbie. Um, like, if, especially if you were, like, a Smoky Mountain fan slash CWA PWF fan back in the day because that angle was awesome. Uh, you get to find out a whole lot of shit. Yeah. If you listen to, like, the last couple, like Dylan, and then uh, the Tony one, the newest one, really good stuff. Um, but, yeah, definitely check his out. It's on uh, Podbean, uh, High Risk Radio, uh, and you can find Robbie on, like, Twitter and Facebook. Look up High Risk Radio or uh, just Robbie Cassidy. The fourth plug, because in case y'all heard any of the shit we are saying at first, uh, check out on Facebook. Go to M R I Designs E M dash R Y. Uh, there you hook up for a lot of like vinyl, custom made shirts and shit. Yeah. Um, and they and it, they pretty much they make I mean they make our podcast shirts still. Yeah, which ones. you know we'll take orders for. Yeah, if Dylan anyone, Sellers, we got to hook you up, and Chris Harmon. Yeah. Anyone interested in a podcast shirt, hit us up. We'll yeah, get we'll you. trade it for favors too. Yeah. Like yeah. If you want a shirt, we can work something out. 
so yeah, but they can do anything. They can put stuff on plates, cups, you name it, car decals. If you can come up with it, pretty much they can do it. Yep. Uh, so hook them. They'll hook you up. One of them's my wife, so obviously you know. Hey, the you're helping me out too. Anyway, so getting back to what he was talking about about this past weekend, huge weekend. Yeah. Great, great show. Uh, we had collision course. It's actually. <laughs> We're not even going to give it a number. It's just Collision Course. Yeah. There's a long story behind that one. Listen to the Tony Robbie podcast and you'll get a funny story yeah. about that shit. It's really cool. Um, But no, we had a Collision Course this past Saturday. And, like, I think it didn't have the star-studded names maybe as it's like last year did. But let's be honest. It's it's hard to, to top our main event from last year. with Which we're going to discuss later yeah. in a question that our boy Chris Harmon gave us. Um, but we start off with like a pre-show match. It wasn't a pre-show match because I'm not gonna say it's a pre-show match. It was pretty good. Yeah, it was a solid um, match. We had you know uh, our favorite people, <clears throat> chaos. <laughs> you know James Judas Pope leading the masses out alongside Travis Dykes and uh, Jeff Conley and uh, Brian Montgomery, aka the Marty Jannetty of the Hardliners, <laughs> as we've dubbed him. Um, wearing some new outfits. What do you think about the new outfits? I was a big fan, actually. I thought the uh, the change in wardrobe actually helped them quite a bit. Did like, you? Yeah, I, I like it. I don't know. I'm okay with it. I don't know what specifically I like, but I, I think it's a much better look. I think it fits them a lot better. Like it just works well as a whole. You're looking at me weird. You, you got a problem? Like, with it? No, I don't know. It's it's like it's taking me a little bit to get used to it. You know? Yeah, I mean, th- I mean, they've been dressing that way for. Like the old way. Like for, I think chaos. While. You know, I'm thinking something dark, and they come out with like these hats. And I think these, that's kind of the like joke. The old though. school jacket. Like, it, okay. Like I, I don't know. I feel like they're speaking of holes. They also had that asshole onslaught with them. Yeah, they did. Who, by the way, I roasted like a motherfucker you with did. the sign, and that shit. Everybody loved it. Uh, if you didn't get to see it, first off, go check out Terry Maple's pictures. Uh, or you can go to my stuff because I pretty much tagged or, everything yeah, in it. Yeah, everything's tagged pretty much. Um, but if you can't do that, I'm just going to tell you what it said. And if you're a wrestling fan, you're going to laugh. Uh, it said, Onslaught is the hand May Young gave birth to, uh, which is hysterical. So, uh, I, they, think, I think this is definitely a solid week for our signs, by the way. The signs were awesome. Yeah. We'll, give you, we'll tell you some of the signs here in a minute. Um, I wish we had kept a sign from the last show because we didn't know who Chaos was going to face. It was a six man tag. And to our surprise, and maybe to like my pleasant surprise a little bit, I know we gave them shit yeah. from the last show. Uh, we had the team of Mason Dixon again, and this time their security guard, who I shut up at the previous show, was actually in the match with them. Yep. Uh, and in all honesty, they had a pretty decent showing. They, I think this was. Better I, yeah, I was than about to say, I think this this was a lot better for them. And, and this is not us like being elitist dicks or anything, but they botched a lot of shit last last the, time. The, the, the last show when they were in the six way gauntlet match, the sixteen gauntlet match, they botched a lot. Yeah, of shit. I mean they, they kind of they they killed some early momentum that I know wasn't the Heat Seekers' fault. No, no, no. But uh, that's the last show we're talking about. This yeah. one, Chaos did pick up the win, um, but it was a pretty good showing considering what. When they come out, I was kind of like, man, I wish we had the who are these yeah. guys signs again. But uh, we're going to talk, I'll talk about them at the end because I'll tell you about the after show part yeah. with them, which I got a lot of respect for them now. Uh, but then, damn, any other night, this might be the match of the night. Really and true. And, and, you know, up until the match that was the match of the night, it was. This killed it. By we far. had the Neon Ninja facade, who's been in the WA Smoky Mountain before. Uh, and sometimes with Facade, who I really, really like, Facade can be hit or miss because he does such crazy shit. Yeah, but and, and, you know, with that crazy shit, like, it's... Obviously, you know, these guys are trained well, and they, they know what they're doing. But, but his stuff is so high risk. Because a lot of the times, you know, if you've never seen Facade uh, in the ring before, definitely go check him out. But he does a lot of rope stuff. Oh, and, God. And by rope stuff, I mean he's, like, walking around on the ropes. And if you are friends with me on Facebook, you've seen the video I shared the other yeah. night. Uh, dude, it was awesome. Right in front of us. Yeah, but so, you know, with him doing, you know, that really high risk stuff, occasionally that can get messed up. 
this wasn't one of those occasions. No, he hit everything. Uh, and, and then what made it even better was a guy we love. Yeah, the guy that uh, I, I hope keeps coming back okay, to smoke. Okay, okay, here you go. This is going to be on the podcast. Um, I'm just going to tell you. Okay. Tony, Robbie podcast. Listen to it. Uh, Tony is going to have him back. Like, he's working out dates with them. They really? Pre- they've earned a spot. Like, he wants them back all the time. That's much. awesome. Because uh, Jason Gorey's the guy we're talking Jason about, Gorey, by the way. Uh, fucking phenomenal is awesome one of my favorite guys his character is so next level it's not even funny like nobody has characters like that anymore uh and it's like he's like I can't like I don't even want to describe it like it's like dark and almost zombie like but not like you know stupid zombie yeah like Like, he plays it really well and to be honest I like he he came out with a different mask this time but I liked the other one better the first time we saw him he had the uh, he had like the Borderlands half gas yeah, mask yeah, yeah. that he kept breathing into the whole match and stuff yeah. like that. But but still, I mean, he, he came out. This he, one was like the gargoyle mask and had like wings and shit. Yeah, on and back. he had the wings and he comes out and spits blood in the air. I mean, yeah. And we had a gory sign, which was pre- okay. Signs. The gory sign was cool as shit. And if you see the picture on uh, Twitter of gory and our sign right there, me holding the sign that my boy over here drew, uh, it's sick. However, getting back to the sign thing, and I know like we're kind of putting ourselves over a little bit, but look, I'm not taking away from match. That match was damn awesome. They did some shit, and I'm going to tell you the finish in a minute. I'm just telling you about this sign because I thought it was cool as shit that I came up with this. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Uh, if, you, if you've seen Facade, you'll know what I'm talking about, and if you were there, obviously you saw it. But if you haven't, uh, Facade... Kind of does like this Ninja Turtle type deal a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. Like the Neon Ninja. He comes out to go Ninja, go Ninja, yeah. go. Uh, but he also has a bottle of spray paint with him all the time. Yeah, and he, he always carries it. And, usually, and he usually has one usually poster has one with him. Made. He has a sign with him. And he gives it to like usually a kid in the crowd. Yeah. Well, we always have signs, obviously. And he's actually done this for us before. But I had this. And in, in one of my moments, I'll be honest, it was ingenious. I had a sign that said Neon Ninja at the top in like neon colors. And then there was nothing in the middle. And then at the bottom, I just drew a black line and it said sign name here. Well, this dude is so good with the spray can. You, you can tell he probably like... He has to do graffiti yeah, art. Yeah, he probably does graffiti art on the side or something because the dude was quick. Oh my God. Like the way that he hit it. And it was, I mean, it was that perfect. style too. And it yeah. was perfect. Uh, he signed it right in the exact spot. Yeah. Coolest looking thing ever. Uh, it's actually up in my son's room. It's cool shit. Yeah. Um, anyway, I'm not going to take away from the match to talk about our signs, but that sign was a cool idea. Let me explain this. First off, if you saw the video of what Facade did where he went from one side of the ropes to the other and then did like a 450 double like axe handle almost. See, and I even showed it to some of my friends who don't go. It's like I showed it to Alex. Yeah. Blew him away. Yeah, dude's nuts. And then, like, I wish I'd recorded the finish. The finish was crazy. The finish is, <laughs> the finish was, uh, Facade and Gory are on the ropes, and Facade like picks Gory up in like a power slam position, and actually does a moonsault with yep. Gory, and does like a power slam moonsault. I don't even know what the hell you call that thing, um, but that's what it was, and it was sick, and that match was awesome. Gory's got it. Gory and them's coming back, according to what Tony said, and I'm ecstatic because those guys are. Yeah, awesome. I'm, I'm I love super both happy to have those guys back. Those guys can do nothing but benefit, like, yeah, and and help us either too. Like it's awesome. Uh, wow, this next one shocked me. Yeah, we had the United States Tag Team Titles on the line. The newly crowned champions. Yep. Air America just won the titles at the last show, defending the titles against the former NWA World Heavyweight Tag Team Champions, the Heat Seekers, Sigmund and Elliot Russell. Guys that are... Like, it, it, it's hard to even, like, describe them because you don't want to do them injustice. These guys, one of the best tag teams in the world, I think. Yes, they, they're they, killing oh, it, really yes. and truly. Like, like I'll put guys, them up against anyone. Yeah, they can be on any show anywhere. And I'm talking not just indies, guys. Like, you put them in TNA right now, they're having a hell of a feud with Abyss and Crazy Steve. Yeah. Or with freaking, it, once the Davey Richards comes back, the Wolves and them have tore it down, like, a couple times yep. already. Uh, and, they and can go with anybody, and their style fits with anybody. That's what I was going to say. One thing I love about their style is, 
Okay, a lot of the times now you'll see tag teams that really kind of just do their own thing as an individual in the ring. But these guys work so well together that it's not even funny. And and it's an old school Yeah, it's style. not like... You're not going to see Motor City Machine Guns. No. Uh, you know, Time Splitters, Young Bucks, stuff like that. Yeah. This is more, you know, like... I'm, I'm, almost like a little bit of the Steiner Brothers. Yeah. To, like, the Andersons. To the, you know, the, the Brain Busters. Yeah. Uh, even to like the Midnight Express and stuff, like it's old school type stuff, but it's not boring stuff. Like I know when you say old school, people are like, oh, it's a damn headlock for ten yeah. minutes. No, it's not that. Uh, because they do some good, good stuff and crazy stuff too. But at the same time, they're just this solid, solid tag team. Anyway, the Heat Seekers, I, I mean, kind of shocked everybody. I think. I think we weren't really shocked. We okay. We kind of thought something was up, but uh. That's beside them. I don't know what was up. It was just a feeling you kind of got watching them. Anyway, the Heat Seekers actually beat Air America yep. and became the two-time NWA United States Tag Team Champions. Uh, so congrats to Sigmund and Elliot Russell. Uh, on the side note, though, they actually didn't get the titles at the end. No. At the end of the match, while all this is all chaos is breaking loose and all this other stuff, uh, the big man, the former one half of the Tag Team Champions. Travis Lee steals the belt. Steals the belt, and you know who who the hell is going to stop Travis? Yeah, Lee? I mean, like, let's be honest here. <laughs> Who's going to stop Travis? Uh, so we got to see what happens with that, uh, which leads us to our next match. Uh, that tag team match was great. Uh, the guys all stood up, shook hands, held hands up after the match. Yep. Really cool. Um, and it was it was one of those things. I I think something like that worked really well after that match because both of those teams are so over with the fans. It's yeah, not even funny. Yeah, because it was like that was one time where the crowd really was split. Yeah. Uh, then we got Travis Dye or Tra- Travis Dyke. Sam <laughs> Travis Lee. Sorry, Travis Dyke had wrestled in like two years. Uh, I wish you would though. I do too. I miss Travis. I'm waiting on a hardcore match. Yeah, I, I'm ready. I can sign up for this. Yeah, shit. I'll do it. Sign me up. All right. You want it, huh? I mean, I'll do it. Okay. Like, whatever. We're going to get good exposure out of this shit. <laughs> I'll whip Travis's ass. I already here on the podcast first, ladies and gentlemen. I am willing to do it. I say ladies and gentlemen like there's I said, actually women that listen to this, which probably never happens. Well, Ram listens. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Travis Lee took on Wild Bill. I love Wild Bill, but... uh. Or Daniel. I, I, you, know, you mean Dan, I mean Daniel. No, no, really what I'm waiting to happen is see Wild Bill and Daniel Mulligan in a tag team match together. I feel like they would compliment each other well. I do too. Uh, but if they're going to have to get another car because they only have the Prius and only one of them <laughs> yeah. can fit in the Prius at a time. Obviously, uh, like that's an inside joke. In case you're wondering, like Wild Bill is Daniel Mulligan. Like if you if you don't know that, you're an idiot already. But Wild Bill and Daniel Mulligan are the same person. So it's, I didn't say that shit. I was keeping k fab real. Like, like it's, I, it's it, like... Come on. <laughs> okay, yeah, okay. Like, f- fine enough, Justin's just going to spoil the shit. Like, whatever. Okay, I feel like if you're listening to this, you probably damn know shit. I mean... Like, if you're listening to this, you're probably not an idiot, let's be honest. Like, if you don't realize... Well, there is Ram. But... <laughs> Todd Todd Farley is actually Wild Bill, guys. Spoiler. If you don't quit fucking up Toby <laughs> Farley's name and calling him yeah, Todd... I've done God, that so many times. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> You know what, Toby? You're gonna have to hurry and come back because my man's done forgot your damn name. I'm sorry, Holy Toby. Holy shit! Go. I hope he needs the shit out of you whenever. I he hope sees he does too. You. That'd be cool shit. Anyway, he can chop me. I mean, I'm just okay. Waiting on like straight to up, it. all you people who keep coming up to Daniel Mulligan at the shows and go, "When are you gonna wrestle?" Okay, I'm just I'm I'm helping you out here. You look like a dumbass. Yeah, like like really and truly. Like I'm not trying to ruin the gimmick. But since Tony kind of fucked up on the Robbie show and kind of gave it away too, like, I'm not, I, sorry. Daniel is Wild Bill. It's a storyline, guys. Holy shit. Like, you, if you can't look at him and know that's Daniel Mulligan, you got problems. Yeah. Now, I'm going to move on from that because I don't want to insult you if you did think that. But if you did, you probably don't need to listen anymore. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, Travis B. Uh, Wild Bill. Um, Travis is just a man. I think he won my disqualification too because Elliot tried to get the belts. Um, I mean, it was what it was. Travis is... And it was like, like uh, man. I was talking to Chris Harmon at the show, like, while Travis's match was going on. I really hope, and this is not taking anything away from Wild Bill or anything, but I really hope Travis gets to branch out more 
and, and like start going and against not other just people. have like the big guy matches. Yeah, or they, or if anything, bring someone in and let Travis go against them because I, I really want to see him do well because I mean he's great in the ring. Really like, uh, really like the character. Yeah. Like I, I hope, I hope he starts excelling more and more. Yeah, and you know breaking some rules here. Travis is cool as shit. Yeah. Like, like, he's just a really cool Travis dude. Travis is the coolest guy in the world. Uh, and one of the nicest guys in the world. Like, if you ever meet him out or talk to him, dude, he's straight up just a genuine good guy. Yeah. Um, don't piss him off. Like, if you piss him off, I mean, he's still six foot eight. Yeah. Like, he's going to he's gonna ruin your damn day. Um, so then, uh, I believe we had intermission. Right? Uh, I think. I think we had intermission. Yeah. Anyway, it didn't matter. Um, this was interesting. Not necessarily, I think we kind of knew who was going to win. Uh, we had Nick Hammonds, uh, as we've dubbed him, the Tommy Dreamer of NWA Smoky Mountain, try to get revenge and take the NWA Mountain Empire title away from the new attitude, heaven sent Vince Brent in new ring attire. Yep. Like actual I, wrestling stuff. I'm gonna I'm gonna be honest. I like obviously I'm still not a huge fan, never will be, <laughs> but like that's like fuck, I don't care. But uh, I'm glad that he's taking a step in the right direction and not looking like he just got done working in a fucking hayfield. I'm happy about that. I'm glad he has ring attire now. I like the ring attire, too. I gotta get along with Vince, so, like, I'm not as, like, I don't know. Like, I don't want to be a dick. Because I'm not, like, I'm, it's not that I hate Vince. Um, I mean, I don't either, obviously. No, it's not. No, Vince is cool. Um... But, I mean, I like the I like the ring attire. I like the, I like the ring attire. I'm a big fan of the tots with the belt. The tights with the belt, like, I know, sure, like AJ has. Like, yeah, like AJ does that. Like, I, I really like that. And and really and truly, his his whole kit kind of reminded me of that. And I think that's another reason I liked it so much. Obviously, no, don't like the Carolina Panthers colors, but... Okay, you know. see, I didn't mind the colors. Like, I think the colors are really cool. I'm glad he picked the Carolina Panthers colors. My one issue that I pointed out to you yeah, during yeah, the show... Yeah. Um, it, look, it's a little shit, I know. So, like, don't think I'm a dick. But, you know, it's one of those things, like, when you're at a wrestling show, if you've watched enough wrestling, like, you notice little shit, especially, like, even the tire. Man, the VB, I know we probably did, they probably did it on purpose, too. It annoys the shit out of me that the VB on the side of his tights look like the WB logo. Yeah. Like, it annoys the shit out of me. Yeah. Like, and I mean, I know that's a petty little thing. Whatever. I love the fact that Vince has this new attitude. His girlfriend has the new attitude. Yeah. Uh, and obviously he's with Dylan and we, I love Dylan. Like yeah. <laughs> Dylan's the best manager around here by far. Ben, he's the best manager since John, uh, John Hawkins was here back in the CWA days. Or if John Hawkins would be able to stay with the damn chaos thing when it first started. John Hawkins was damn amazing. And like I talked about, you know, the one before, yeah. go check John Hawkins out. Um, because the old school stuff was awesome. He was here with Robbie Tony when all that stuff was going on. It it was damn amazing. Anyway, Vince got the win, cheated, which is kind of a new thing. But um, but it, I mean it goes it, it goes well with the it, character. It, it goes well with the attitude. It works. I liked it. Yeah. Um, so Vince uh, defeated Nick. Um, you got to know somewhere down the road. Toby slash Todd, if you're talking about him, Farley. Fuck off, man. I don't mean to keep messing it up. I really don't. <laughs> Toby Farley's going to get his hands on Vince. Toby Farley's going to end up taking the title back. I really think that eventually. Like, it's going to be or, interesting or to see anything, what happens. If anything, Toby's going to like just completely you know, annihilate Vince or whatever and just jump into like, you know, contention for the other stuff. We'll see. We'll see. Because I, I want to see, see Toby do well. Just so you know, if all shit breaks loose right here, I'm pretty sure my kid's home, so my dogs and shit's getting ready to go like shit. Like I, like I, but but really and true, like I want to see Toby do well, just because I mean he's he was Toby, killing Toby it. Toby was man. right there. He getting had ready to he, break out. He had so much momentum um, behind him, and that's just that's a super shitty situation that he got hurt. Like it really is. But I love the fact that Vince is a uh, heel now. Yeah, guy. and and I think and I love the fact that we're finally getting Vince and Dylan getting to work together because Vince thing, and Dylan are really good friends. One thing I thought about too. Do you think Toby getting hurt, like, was a catalyst for Vince turning? Do you think that helped? Or, no, no, no. Or do you think that was going to happen That was anyway? going to happen anyway. That just gave it another angle, if anything else. Yeah, I think it was going to happen anyway. Anyway, here we go. Actually, then was intermission after that match. Uh, because the match coming back from intermission was one I was really looking forward to. 
Uh, we had Ali Sabas. You know, he's been a mainstay in NWA Smoky Mountain now for probably two years. Yep. Um, who he's like a crazy, crazy athlete and looks like a yeah, damn, dude, dude's built super well. I mean, like it's really, kind of crazy. I know I keep talking about, it, but he's got the nickname Human Action Figure. Well, for a reason. Yeah, he looks like somebody made an action figure and brought it to life. Uh, but like I was so excited for this match because of the guy he's facing. Because I'm a huge Eric Darkstorm yeah, fan. Yeah, that dude kills it. Eric Darkstorm. And you gave me a hug. Yeah, I got a hug. <laughs> He's, yeah. Eric Darkstorm gave me a hug. That's how close we But, were. like, Darkstorm everyone like, was, dominated the match. Yeah, like, everyone was looking forward to it. It was a squash. Like, Darkstorm did. He dominated yeah. all he And just kind of, you know, he cemented the fact that we're going to talk about the show coming up this Saturday for Pro Wrestling South. Dark Storm's in that main event. We'll tell you about here in a little while. Yeah. And that just made it even more interesting. Uh, but, so, Eric Dark Storm picked up a big win over Ali. Great to see Eric Dark Storm back because I missed having him here. Yeah. Uh, he's a super, super talented guy. Now, <laughs> this match. This First was... off, okay, first off, Michael Elgin. Uh, we met him before the show for the meet and greet thing. One of the coolest, most laid-back guys I've ever met in my life, Michael Elgin, sat there with a dip in, was tired of shit, too. Like, straight-up props to him because he, like, had zero sleep from, like, Wednesday, and that was Saturday night. This dude was on the grind. Like, he told us, like, his schedule and how he was, uh... He was from Japan the other day. Yeah. Like, on Wednesday. Flew to Chicago. Had wrestled in Chicago on Friday night. Flew to the Tri-Cities wrestled at Smoky Mountain on Saturday night and then flew back and fought on the pay-per-view for Ring of Honor and then he had three more days of taping. Yep. Of Ring of Honor tapings. Like, oh, holy shit, this dude is a damn animal. Um, But, cool guy ever. We got to meet him. Uh, dude, I've never met a guy that was that laid back. Yeah, he was, That that's easily one of the coolest guys we've ever met. Like, as far as just wrestling guys that, and, like, he's a beast too. Like, to be as big as he is, and, like, you're thinking, like, okay, he's going to be this super intimidating guy. He's not. He's the opposite of that. No, like, he's, so, like, kind of soft-spoken. And, yeah. Uh, re- and, like, really, really, like, chilled out and mellow. Like, for somebody who's going to be in, like, this hell of a battle or it's, against Jason Kincaid. Especially after, like, you know, what you said, like, the week that he had oh, had the travel? already. The tra- and, like, I told him, like, I saw the uh, Kenny Omega match from Japan yeah. earlier in the week. Holy shit, guys. Go watch the match. Yeah. Oh, my God. Like, Kenny Omega's so good anyway. Elgin now, like, has moved up so far on my list of people. Yeah, and, like, after seeing him, him and Jason absolutely yeah. tore the house First down. First off, I loved, I liked Elgin before. Now I love Elgin. Yeah. Um, him and Jason Kincaid. It's one of those things, like, I want to have him back, but I know, like, that that's super hard. Like, it's super hard, but it's also, like, you know, who, who there's only, like, a select few people that can go with him because he is at such a high level. Yeah. Because, and we're going to answer your question later, Chris, because it's a great question. Yeah. This match was so epic and so awesome. Jason Kincaid and Michael Elgin wrestled to a 30-minute time limit draw. And to the point, the entire crowd was asking for five more minutes. And then Michael Elgin cut a promo, which was awesome. Yep. And said, this is why I didn't sign an exclusive contract with Ring of Honor. Because I wanted to come to places like NWA Smoky Mountain and fight all this great talent like Jason Kincaid, Chase Owens, go to Pro Wrestling Gorilla, go to wherever. That's why he didn't sign exclusively. And he's fighting with the New Japan signing. And he had one of the... I'd say one of the coolest fan interaction moments I've seen in a match, especially uh, the in kid. person. The yeah. kids thing? He, um, okay, so what he did, they, they get out of the ring, and the, the, the kids that are front row, he tells them all to like put their feet straight he out. He puts like four kids together. Yeah, and then he runs Jason's... like. Hey, and Okay, look, I know this is breaking K-Fan. Jason Kincaid sold this so sold damn Sold it well. perfectly. Like, I was worried, kind of. Like, I was too, because I was, I was like, man, he's going to throw... Like, if he really hits these kids, like... We're getting sued. Yeah. Or, you know, I say we. Smoky Mountain's getting sued. Uh, like, and he did it on, like, three or four different sets of kids. Yeah. Uh, which was one of the coolest, like, interactions. Like, you don't expect that from, like, t- the two top guys. Yeah. On the show, really. Um, 
you know, one, the marquee thing, really. I mean, the tag team match is the main event, but, you know, as far as wrestling-wise in the ring, this, 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 this was, was your wrestling match. This was the, the wrestling It was match. like, you know, what we had talked about uh, when they were about to open the doors and uh, well, they come out and they're like, okay, who's ready for X-Pac? And everyone, you know, Raisin Kane, like, they're super excited. It's like, how many people are ready for Mike Elgin? And like, four or five of us are like, yeah, yeah I'm Mike Elgin. Yeah. <laughs> uh, which is really cool. Like, you brought that up. Uh, and I, I, it's one of those like, damn, I feel like Robbie Casty may have to like pay me because I keep talking about his podcast. Yeah. But he had Tony on there, and Tony said this is one of his philosophies he does a lot of times when they do shows like this. Is he has like this mainstream big name, yeah. like X Pac was, for all your casual fans. And then, and then for all your smart marks slash internet yeah. wrestling fans, whatever you want to call us, um, he'll bring in like the, uh, the indie darling, yeah. you know, whatever. Which was Michael Elgin. I mean, I love X Pac too. Like I'm kind of both. Like I love the and big he, name, and he can but, still go, which we found out. Yeah, later. we'll talk about that one in a minute. Uh, Michael Elgin and Jason did so much stuff in that 30 minutes, um, and oh my god! Like <laughs> you know the show where we talked about the cup. Um, you wanted Jimmy Rave to chop you. Yeah. Well, in the middle of this show, you looked at me like I want Jimmy Rave to chop me. I don't want Michael Elgin no, to chop me. Because Michael Elgin chops don't smack. They're just thumps. They're like, thuds. Like, like th- this man will stop your heart with a chop. Like, like, yeah, like okay, I, made, I like, made a joke. Like, it was hilarious, too. Chris Harmon was sitting with us, and Chris yeah. Harmon's like, I don't know he's not knocked the breath out of Jason. I said, the hell with knocking the breath out of him? His heart stopped 12 <laughs> yeah. fucking times. What the hell are you talking about losing his breath? His heart was stopping. Like, I... I Again, still, Jimmy Rave comes back. I will pay him legitimate money to get chopped. Right. I, I, I'll pay Michael Elgin to chop you. I want no part of that. <laughs> no part. <laughs> but, uh, no, Michael Elgin and Jason had an epic match. Yeah. A match that, man, when t- 15 years from now, when somebody's talking about NW Smoking Mountain, this match is going to get mentioned. Yeah. Um, because it was a war for 30 minutes. They wanted five more minutes. And Jason actually said no, um, which you know, yeah. stating character. Yeah, to to do you know to be in that situation when, in reality, you could go five more minutes with one of the best guys in the world, but you you take a step down from your wrestling pride, to you know say I'm still in character, I'm still going to be the heel. This is my belt. You're getting no part of it. I I thought that was a huge thing, but that wasn't the match everyone was uh, all about. Like, like that wasn't. It was. I. It was our okay. match, but it wasn't the crowd's match. Like it was. Like I even like this match. But yeah. Here, this was a really cool match. Um, one, first off, um, and it was a little hectic because X Pac, like, his flights kept getting canceled and delayed, and it wasn't his fault. And it wasn't Smoky Mountain's fault. But there for a little while, like it was pretty scary that X Pac. Like, we didn't know if he was gonna show up. Like legitimately, it was like, oh shit, what if X Pac doesn't show? And, uh, man, to his credit, I know, like, there was a, there was a little incident that I know happened, like, an intermission where they announced that Xbox was going to come out. And he looked at Tony, like, I guess, like, even when his, right when his music started, he said, man, look, I'm, he's got to get ready for his match. Yeah. Plus, I mean, he was wore out. He'd been trying to travel all day. Uh, I know Matt Rhodes wasn't real happy. Um, which on Matt yeah. Rhodes' podcast, I think he mentioned something about it. But, you know, um... I understand both sides of it because Matt Rhodes kind of looked like an idiot a little bit because he had made the announcement X-Pac yeah. was coming out. And then, we'll get to this part in just a second, X-Pac kind of roasted him and Cooper and them because the mic didn't work when he first got there. Yeah. Um, anyway, uh, Agency comes out, Chris Richards, Jordan Cage. Jordan Cage carrying the Smoky Mountain Cup's awesome. Um, I, I, I hope he carries it yeah. all year. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. I hope this is the Owen Hart Slammy yeah. Award thing. Like just constantly, he has the the c- tr- cup. With even him. even in the promo uh, with with them taking out Chase, he has it even then. Yeah, like, that's right. Like again. after the show, they they beat up Chase, but yeah, he had it with him then. Um, they come out. Um, of course, they're getting the heat. Dylan, obviously, a manager who's going to get so much heat anyway. Yeah, Dylan can come out by himself. He's going to get heat, which is why Dylan's great. Um, Dylan could be with someone like Air America and be like playing. For the crowd, like be a face, and, and everyone like still would, get they heat. would still hate yeah. Dylan. Yeah, um, but anyway, I love Dylan. I don't give a shit. Um, so Chase comes out. Um, obviously, big everybody kind of marks out. Bullet Club, everybody's up standing. Yeah. 
Uh, we actually went uh, a little different this time with signs for the main event. A little bit old school. Yeah, like I fe- kind of felt like the old NWO stuff because we actually got black poster board and we actually got white spray paint. And like just straight and we had up. a white poster board with green spray, pa- spray paint for Xbox. But yeah, my boy over here did some uh, artwork. We had Biz Clizz, we had Two Sweet Me, and yep. then we had X Pac suck it on signs. Um, and so Chase comes out, big pop for Chase, and Chase was like, you know, he's not coming out alone this time. Yeah. Points to the back, and then like the mo- you know, X Pac. The moment music that everyone has been waiting for. Yeah. Everybody gets to hear, you know, are you ready? And DX music hit, and out comes X Pac. And from what I was like told, like. You know, X Pac's an older guy, and like you know, he was moving around slow in the back and all such stuff. And this is what like, you know, helping listening to Robbie's podcast, hearing Tony talk about some of the stuff. Like talking about this is a guy, you know, he was barely walking. You know, yeah. he's been traveling all day and all this stuff. Instead, of, like he steps through the curtain, and it's like a switch goes off. Yeah, and like he took like once he stepped out, he entertained that crowd from the moment he stepped out till the time he left. Um. And, and to be honest, the match went how most Kinda of like, us, <laughs> yeah. again, quote-unquote internet wrestling fans, if like you, if said. You, if, you've, if you're a smart fan and you've seen like these matches that have the older guys in them. Like, you know like, what's going to happen. Now, to that point, Xbox's still really good in the ring. Yeah, and, and, and this is something, and this is just with age, he throws a lot of kicks, but I think a lot but of the, that... These are, decent kicks they don't like no no they're good kicks but what i'm i think he uses those kicks and them being as you know as good as they are for his age he uses those to counteract the fact that i mean he had like a brace on his shoulder oh his shoulders messed up. like he he probably doesn't have the best shoulders no i mean you know those guys but i mean he still went he still did his thing yeah the hell they put their bodies through for 20 plus years yeah especially during that Um, age oh yeah yeah but uh you know i mean x-pac was cool uh we got the two sweet me from x-pac yeah um and one you know Chase and X Pac won the match, uh and then actually in the final moment of the show, Chase grabs uh, Dylan, throws him back in the ring, super kicks yeah. Dylan, which miraculously sends Dylan perfectly into the corner, <laughs> and we get the X Pac Bronco Buster on Dylan. And as most people have said on their podcasts, on comments, it was probably the highlight of Dylan's not to have another man's balls in his face. <laughs> um, <laughs> I love you, Dylan. <laughs> anyway, uh, so that was cool. Obviously, crowd popped. Um, and so the people who bought meet and greet tickets, which we were some of them, uh, the first two rows, uh, to make up, because X-Pac obviously wasn't there at the meet and greet, because he didn't even get to the arena until like 7.30. Yeah. Um, X-Pac... Then they told us um, Xbox stayed afterwards, and so which which really and truly like I know it actually worked out pretty well. It worked out better that way, I think. Um, and I'll say this because you know it was shitty kind of for people who had to meet and greet tickets. You didn't get to meet Xbox when you first got there. To the point of you know you can say Xbox not coming out of intermission sucked and Xbox done this and that whatever. Um, what's what's he honest. made it up to everybody? He didn't because have, he didn't have to stay afterwards. No, because like I'm gonna tell you right now. He stayed at that table, and it was a huge line. Like, I'm not talking it was a little line. It was a huge line. Yeah. I, th- I honestly think there were, like, more people in that line. There were line. more people going in that line than what should have, because you could buy the autographs and stuff. Yeah. Um, but, it, to Xbox's credit, like, man, he stayed there to the last person and, and he who wanted was, to go through that line. And, he you was, know. He was cool, man. Like, thinking about that, that's what I was going to say. Yeah. You know, a lot of guys in that same situation, they're probably going to be a little bit dickish <laughs> I he guess wasn't. I'll make it my own word dickish like even it was like when we walked up there like I didn't get an autograph or anything and I you know I, I you know walk up and of course we get our picture made and of course that'll be the that'll be the title for this podcast if you see it on YouTube like he was asking he's like you know how are you like you know what's your name like he was trying to like legitimately meet everyone yeah, shake their yeah, hand yeah. Just really going out of his way to do stuff like yeah, that. I thought that was really cool. It was really cool. Because I had my son with me, too, at this show. Um, and he's 13. And, like, he loves, especially, like, the DX stuff and all that stuff back then. Um, because I've made him watch it for years. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm raising him right. You just gaslighted yeah. him into I gaslighted him into Um But, so, like, Justin, like, I got in Justin's picture with yeah. him. Justin paid for to get his picture made. And Justin was like, you're getting a picture of me, right? I'm like, well, okay, if you want me to. 
uh, which you're going to get to see with this, this podcast. Um, and my son, like, it was funny. Like, he was like, well, I'm getting my picture made by myself, right? Yeah. I'm like, that's, whatever, that's, me. that's fine. Um, but, uh, so, like, I, I bought, like, I got my son an autographed picture, and I got my son to get his picture made, which was like 20 bucks. Look, for 10 bucks, that's not bad. No. Uh, and then I actually had two items to get signed by him. And the first one was, uh, I had I have an NWO shirt that uh, was already signed by Scott Hall. Uh, now it's been signed by X-Pac, which is really cool. Um, and obviously, if you know about the June 24th show, I'm going to pick up the Kevin Nash signature and, yep. and Buff Bagwell. Um, so I'm just going to see how many NWO members I can get. Um, but the part that was I thought was kind of cool was uh, I got a poster that uh, one of my buddies on uh, eBay, he'll, he'll, he'll print custom posters. Like you send him a photo, he'll print them for you. Um, and I've got a couple of different ones I'm going to have for like this, this show Saturday. Actually, mm-hmm. I got a really cool one. Um, but for this one, I had the old school, uh, when the NWO first came to WCW, like white and black photo. Okay. And it says Wolfpack across the bottom. And like, if some people don't know the original Wolfpack was kind of what it was the click in WCW. Yeah. It was the the part of the click that came from WWF to WCW in that controversial period, which was Hall Nash and Six slash X Pac, whatever you want to call him, and uh, like I pulled it out and like he was like, oh man, and uh, the way he autographed and stuff was cool as shit. Yeah, because he wrote uh, like he signed X Pac obviously, but then he wrote like Wolfpack and put like these little like wolf ears and eyes and shit on it, and it was like Wolfpack for life and shit, which was really cool. Um, and I obviously I'm gonna get it signed by Hall and Nash whenever yeah. we go this next time, uh, or June the 24th. Um, but so I was gonna get X Pac, man. Like he was like so nice too. Like to go through everything he did, yeah, just fought, like just wrestled a match. Like, like dude, literally walked out of the ring, walked to his table, sat there for uh, what uh, an hour? Yeah, Probably oh close yeah. To an hour. I, I guarantee it was an hour. Um, so big props to X Pac. Um. Like, it was, like, a cool moment to meet a legend like that because he's gone in the Hall of Fame, you know, eventually anyway. And just the whole, you know, we saw X-Pac growing up. I mean, who the hell thought we was going to Yeah. <laughs> like, it's like, I got to meet X-Pac. It's like, holy shit. Um, but I was going to plug this, too. Uh, <laughs> the tag team was in the first match against Chaos. Mason Dixon. Yeah. I'm going to give them so much respect and props. Those guys, from the moment their match was over... Until until and, legitimately no one was left but us and other wrestlers and the crew working with the ring. And yeah, stuff. like like us. That was it. Like us being like breaking tape up and hanging out with everyone after. Yeah, the show. yeah. That was that was it. Like that's all that was left. They are still down there trying to sell their. And shit. And they're like they're up on. I'm the table. talking on chairs. They're on the chairs with like, no shirts on. They're just doing it, man. Yeah. Like they, like they are really really about the grind. Like it is so good. And uh, even though you know we had kind of had the words at the show before. Which is just playing, you know, whatever. Um, I like we walked down there and they knew because I was looking over there and I didn't have my money yeah. in my hand. And I told Justin and Chris and my son, I told him, I said, if those guys are still down there when we get done meeting X Pac, I'm buying something from them. Yeah, I said, I don't give a shit if it's a picture or whatever, I'll give them five dollars for whatever. Uh, because they deserved it. And, they, they, and, yeah. and what's funny is, like, these guys, you know, they had the little gimmick in the ring or whatever, and they, like, played off it. And even the whole time... Even the whole time. Like, legitimately, yeah. when I get down there, they're still trying to, like, mess with us. And yeah. Do all this. And they do, like... I'm not gonna lie. Uh, there's no other way for me to put it. They, they do this little, like... I'm trying to think we get queerish. Queer. They're, they're almost being flirty. Fruity. Yeah. Fruity. Fruity is what we're gonna use. But it's one of those, like, you know they're playing. Um, but they sell it really well. And, like, if you're, if you like, pretty secure in your masculinity, you're you'll, fine. you'll joke around about this shit. Uh, it's really cool to joke around with them because they're, yeah. <laughs> they're, they're cool. Um, and what was cool was I said, uh, how much is a picture? And uh, they were like, $5. And I'm like, oh, I'll take a picture. And uh, I got to pick out the picture, which is funny as crap. Yeah. I, like, the picture's hysterical anyway. Uh, and they're like, well, since you bought that picture, you get a picture with us also. And so Justin took a picture of me with them. Um, and it's like, they put them, I, I mean, they, they put you like yeah, under the bridge. Yeah. Uh, we put him in the bridge. They yeah. put me in the bridge and <laughs> I'm not going to get too vulgar on here, but it was really funny what was said during this yeah. whole time. Uh, 
like, and they were still goofing off with us, saying the same stuff. And then when they got it over with, we took the picture, and you know, we was telling them, you know, thanks. Um, they kind of they broke the character. Yeah, I was about thing. to say they get super serious. Yeah, they got super, like, he's like, know, man, we appreciate like, it. Thank you for supporting indie wrestling. Yeah. It means a lot to us, and um, that was super cool. Yeah, so like I knew like that was five dollars. Like even if I didn't need to spend five dollars, that was five dollars I'm okay spending because yeah. those guys work their ass off, not just in the ring, like literally all night. They might work harder selling their stuff after than they were in the ring, to be honest. <laughs> they like, might have. That's the only thing is the ring work. No. It was better this time. Yeah, it was super good this time. They just, they were trying to sell. They even made Chase come over and help them in yeah. the mission, which is funny. Um, anyway, so that show was really good. Uh, if you were there, you know, you saw it. It was a great, great show to be at, really. I mean, and Jason Michael Elgin was damn amazing. Facade gory. I mean, man, if you're a fan of spots and just high-flying shit, facade gory man is worth the price of admission every damn time and gory's man just his character and like the biting stuff that he does i love it oh god yeah when he spit out skin that time and like those women freaked out and And, like i I made the joke like during that match i was like you know facade dies in pro wrestlers versus zombies i know gory's the new age plague uh yeah technically technically um what do you want he just randomly walk over here. He just walked over here and said, "Yeah, I thought she's gonna say something because we brought up pro wrestlers versus zombies." Yeah, well, it's not I time know. for you yet. I know. So okay, what, so what we got next? Our next okay. big show, I guess. So uh, we're gonna plug the NWA Smoky Mountain show first, then we'll get yeah. to this week. Yeah, the next NWA Smoky Mountain show actually is there's actually one in Hancock County, like Sneedville, June the fourth. Um, not going to. Either. Yeah, we're probably not gonna make. It no, up. I'm not going to Hancock County unless I'm no. getting paid. So, if Tony wants to pay me, I'll make some damn signs and come. But uh, that's a long damn way. In the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, good luck. I know, uh, I think it's Vince Brandt versus Sigmund is the main event. Okay. Um, so, you know, maybe Sigmund will be Vince. Uh, but the next big NWA Smoky Mountain show is June the 24th. And I know we've already talked about this a little bit, but June the 24th in Elizabethan at Evolution Gym. You already know the two big names. They're going to be there signing autographs. Hall and Nash. The Outsiders will be in the house. The other two members of the original Wolf Pack. Yep. Um, so, obviously, man, if you got something signed by Xbox, got something to do with that shit, you definitely need to be up there. Um, plus, it's Hall and Nash, man. Like, It's big sexy. First off, my nickname in 7th and 8th grade football which Powell Valley was our big rival. Yeah. So they're the Powell Valley Vikings. So my, we all had nicknames, and we put them on our lockers in the 8th grade locker room. Mm-hmm. Mine was Big Sexy the Viking Killer. <laughs> um, That's kind of crazy now that we're like part of a Viking group, huh? Oh, shit. I didn't even think about that. Damn. Damn. You're breaking like some other kind of K-Fab. Wow. <laughs> Mad Beer Viking Club. Check that shit out, too. Yeah. If you got a beard. Or a mustache. Or, well, okay, Fuck that guy that's got the goatee. Yeah. He, whatever. Um, <laughs> anyway. Um, he, he pisses me off. That dude's a shit, bro. Let's just yeah, like, he's, like, I'm not saying you gotta be poor to have a beard. This some bitch looks like he's driving a Bentley and he's going to all these damn art shows and shit. Like, he makes more in a week than I make in a year. And he's got a goatee and he's in a beer group and he thinks he's in a damn motorcycle game. So that guy's a douchebag. Um, anyway. Off that. Hall and Nash will be in Elizabeth in Tennessee. Yeah. Now, uh, I'm going to say it's okay for me to talk about these matches because Tony did it on Robbie's. I mean, it was an ex- he said it's an exclusive thing on Robbie's. Um, but since I listened the whole two and a half hours or whatever. And, and plus, like, you know, we kind of talked about this. If you listen to this when you like, listen. Like, more than likely, if you're listening to us, you're also listening to that podcast. So, like, we're not really spoiling anything. No. So, if you know, I mean, yeah, whatever. If you don't. Hey, shit, you need to get a ticket now. Uh, so, we're kind of going to have a rematch of the main event from this last show. Yep. We're going to have the agency again. Chris Richards, Jordan Cage, accompanied by Dylan Sizemore. Yep. Vote for Dylan. He should be the president of the NWA. Um, taking on Chase Owens. And Chase Owens is not coming along again this time. He's actually recruited another former NWO member as he will be teaming with Buff the Stuffed Bagwell on June the 24th to take on the agency. Hey, Bullet Club, NWO, it's a marriage made in heaven. It really is. It really is. Um, but that's not the only match we got announced so far. 
Champion versus champion, no titles on the line, but we're going to see who is the second best champion in this company. When the 18-year-old phenom, still in high school, just got an athletic scholarship in two sports, the King College. Really? Yes. That's sick. Axton Ray is going to take on Heaven Sent, new attitude, new outfit. Hell, I, I may even like him a little more now. Vince Brent. I'm going for my man Axton. Well, it's going to be at the first or second on the card, because if not, it'll be past Axton. It's bad time. We're going to have a sign war? We may have a sign war that night. Wait, you're going to make a Vince sign, really? Ah, fuck that. No, yeah. never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's, I can't. Like, it's against my religion. Exactly. Um, I, I, I'm in the religion of challenge, as Jason Cage refers to. Okay. Yeah, we're, we're the challenge religion. Yeah. Um, anyway, this match here, like, those two matches are great, too. This match is just damn, like, this is going to, okay, I'm going out on the limb now. Okay. And Vince and Axon will be great. I think so as Despite well. Despite how you feel about either, any of them. Um, the Heat Seekers, the new United States Tag Team Champions, are going to defend the U.S. titles versus maybe the most dangerous team they could face. Yeah, you're probably right about that. They're going to take on former one half of the United States Tag Team Champions, the giant Travis Lee. And look, if he's going to pick a partner to have in a match, he can't do any yeah, better than this. Yeah, I was about to say, this. he can't do any he better. He can't do any better than this because the Cabal is going after the United States Tag Team titles that night as Jason Kincaid and Travis Lee will team up to take on the Heat Seekers. Jason going for two belts. Jason's trying to be a dual champ, man. Yep. Hey, you know... That's a deadly, deadly combination. Yeah. Jason and I mean, because you got all the pa- you got all the power of Travis, and then and you- Jason's just damn amazing. Yeah. Like despite what, whatever any one of the most one of the most creative guys, he, maybe the most one of the most, maybe the most creative guy. Yeah, like, he does stuff nobody ever thinks about. Yeah, like just the way that he uses a ring, especially around the around the ropes, around the turnbuckle, ingenious. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it's just uh, he's so good. And, and, you know, breaking a little bit, Jason's, like, a really cool guy. Yeah. Like, you don't want to piss him off either, though. Um, Jason will whip your ass. Yeah. I mean, he's from West Virginia. Um, not, <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> you know how that works. Anyway, so, that's June the 24th. Now, get away from NW Smoky Mountain. This Saturday, two days from while we're recording this, probably it goes up tomorrow. Yeah, it's going to go up tomorrow. So, you got a day... You can still get tickets. Uh, front row is sold out. Yeah. Front row is gone. Well, you got front row tickets, just so you know ahead of time. Of course. Of course. <laughs> you know how we roll. Anyway, Pro Wrestling South is going to put on another huge show where they're bringing in somebody who's always come in most of their shows. Yeah. Uh, the Pro Wrestling South heavyweight champion, Matt Hardy. You know, the Hardy Boys. You know, I'm pretty sure everybody's listening to this knows V1. V1. <laughs> um, Matt Hardy, stronger than death. Uh, he will be in the house defending the PWS heavyweight title against the man we talked about earlier, Eric Darkstorm. I'm, I'm calling it now. Darkstorm's going to win. God, I hope so. I, love I do Darkstorm. too. I'm a huge like, Darkstorm, Darkstorm, Darkstorm fan. Uh, and I like, look, I, Matt's always been cool with us. Yeah. Um, yeah he's, he, al- he's, he's always been real nice he, with us. He's been cool when we've met him. Uh, every time, yeah, yeah, every single time. Like he's and just really even the cool last dude. time was really he was really cool. The last yeah. Time. Um. Anyway, that match is gonna be awesome. Also, you're gonna have Skylar Cruz taking on Vince Brent, which I'm excited for. Which will be a good match. Uh, Want to see my man Skylar do well with the the super kick that I talked about? Oh, before the, the shotgun show. super kick. The, yeah, the twelve gauge kicker. Yeah, I like it. We're gonna tell him that's the new name of that. Yeah, twelve gauge kicker. Yeah. Um. Also. We got Big Al versus Chris Shane in an I Quit match, and whoever loses has to leave. Pro Wrestling's out. Yep. Then, let's see what else do we have that night. Oh yeah, for the PWS Tag Team Championships. This one's gonna be big. You have Dax Cable and Michael Starr, the tag team champions. I'm so excited! Defending the titles. <laughs> You want to say it? No, go for it. Okay. No, you're into it. I am so into this. <laughs> Defending the tag team titles against the white trash millionaires, Corey and Lenny Stratton. Our boys. I'm telling you right now, the first time that 
the White Trash Millionaires and the Till Account of Five podcast have been in the same building at the same time, and we are probably going to piss everybody in that place off because we that's don't worth give a the, shit. That's worth the price that's of admission. That's worth the price of admission to see us and the White Trash Millionaires. Straight up. Yeah. This might be the most we've ever been a part of the show. That's it. Lenny Stratton's my motherfucking hero. All yeah. Right? That's it. Straight up. Anyway, also, we're going to have a women's match. A tag team women's match. Yep. Um, we're going to have, like, Danny Ferrara versus, and uh, I think it's uh, uh, Maria Manic mm-hmm. taking on uh, Vince's girlfriend. Okay. And Lenny Stratton's wife. That would be pretty like, sick. Yeah, and Nicole's, she's a badass. I'm telling you right now. She's awesome. Uh, okay. Her and Danny have been tearing it up and stealing the show everywhere they go. Really? Yeah. Like, I'm talking cage matches, jumping off ladders. Damn. Straight up killing it. Uh, as if that wasn't enough, the legendary one half of the Road Warriors. I mean, the only living half of the Road Warriors. Rest in peace, Hawk. Yeah. Um, Road Warrior Animal is going to be in the house on Saturday night. To sign autographs, take pictures. And, and the big and, one. Okay, and, this is the big one. Okay? okay, hold on. My boy's like a kid in the candy shop. You get to put on his fucking shoulder pads. The ones with the spikes. Guys, like, I've been a fan <laughs> <laughs> my whole life. Like, you don't understand. They are one of my favorite tag teams of all time. My dad raised me on them. Okay? The fact that I'm going to put those motherfucking shoulder pads. I'm, <laughs> I'm pushing kids out of the way, bro. <laughs> Like I don't even care. <laughs> oh my god! Um, like I'm, I'm excited to try it on shoulder pads. I'm excited to get the item I have signed. Yeah, I am uh, too. Which is straight up gangster. If you're gonna be at the show, you gotta come check it out. Yeah. Uh, I'm not even gonna spoil it. You gotta come see what I got to get signed at this show. It's sick. Um, anyway, so go check that show out. Uh, general admission tickets still left. There may be a couple second row tickets. If you don't get tickets before. Like tomorrow night when you listen to this, you're probably going to be out. You're of probably going to sit in general admission, uh, which still come do that too because it's going to be a hell of a show. It's Advanced Middle School in Bristol. Um, come check it out because it's going to be awesome. And I'm going to go ahead and plug this one for my boy Lenny. Lenny Stratton's doing a show on the 21st. I know we keep talking about it, but this is a bit like, look, I want you to go to all these shows, but if you can only pick one of these shows to go to, just because it's for a good cause, go, go to this go one. to the 21st. Uh, Lenny Stratton and them are doing a show at the Evolution Gym, um, the 21st of May, um, and it's a benefit or thing for cancer. Um, Lenny's dad actually died from cancer. Yep. Um, they're going to do a really cool thing. Like, if you can get on there, and uh, if you have somebody in your family that's died from cancer, uh, they want you to take a picture, whatever, and uh, send it to them. And they're, like, going to make a video and stuff to show that night. And they got, they got this big Titan Tron thing. Yeah, kind of like a big com- com- commemorative thing. Yeah. Uh, it's um, going to be really cool. And not to mention, um, you know, I'm building it up like it's going to be a shitty card kind of, but it's not. It's freaking loaded. He's got people coming in from everywhere. They're going to have a battle royal. Um, and everyone's every- everyone's doing it for free. Yeah, right? every, everybody is yeah. working for free to raise money on this night. Every bit of the money they raise goes to cancer. Yeah. Um, fight cancer. Yeah. Um, Lenny, the main event is going to be Lenny Stratton versus Matt Cross, uh, which is Son of Havoc in yeah. Lucha Underground. Uh, if you've heard of Matt Cross or seen Lucha Underground, the dude's great. Yeah. Um, and he's got a different style to him and stuff. But him and Lenny are going to fight the main event. And that match is going to be awesome. But, damn, it's for a good cause. Um, so go help him out. Like, it's $10. Every seat's $10. First come, first serve come to this show go go the 21st Elizabeth and even if you can't go to the show like look send Lenny and them a message send us a message I don't give a shit um, you can donate money even if it's five dollars um, cause I mean every one of us knows somebody's had cancer or got somebody in our family's had cancer and cancer sucks um, yeah, so for one cancer. night yeah for one night we're, everybody's gonna try and kick cancer's ass um, so you know, go check that show out. Um, and you can find that stuff. Like, uh, usually we'll share stuff, comment on stuff. Uh, look up Lenny Stratton. He'll have it on there. He posts every day a bunch about stuff uh, for that show. And uh, it's definitely a worthwhile cause. So, that's pretty much it for the local stuff right yeah. now. Um, which, which, which was is a lot. lot. Yeah, there was a lot. Um, so, and we're going to hit some of this stuff really, really quickly. Uh, we're going to talk WWE for a second. 
because we had some big time shit happen this past week. Yep. Uh, with WWE releases and people they let go. Um, some of them aren't very surprising. Like Alex Riley. Yeah. He had a decent run. Um, I think they they probably could have done some more with him, but he was down in NXT and. He had some injuries, and it's probably better off. And he, and let's be honest, like him going down to NXT at the time he did, like look at everyone. Oh yeah, he, at he's NXT. buried. Yeah. Um, <laughs> this one, I mean, it's kind of sad, I guess. Santino, yeah, uh, entertaining shit. Um, he's not right in the ring. Who the hell didn't like seeing the Cobra? Yeah. Um, but not necessarily surprising here. I mean, I how long has it been since you saw Santino on TV? Um. <laughs> I'm hoping like there's not a lawsuit involved with these next two because technically I don't want them to be like discriminated against them. But you got El Torito and Hornswoggle. Yeah. Pretty sure they just fired every midget they had on the roster. I'm pretty sure as well. Or little person. I don't think I can call them midgets anymore. No, it's anymore. a little person. Little person. Yeah. Carney fuck. PC, bro. <laughs> yeah, we're real PC <laughs> on this fucking show. <laughs> Um, you got a few surprising ones though. Okay, yeah, Torito Hornswoggle. Like that. Okay, one's... Torito got let go because like they changed the whole game because of the Los Manadors. Yeah, they're whatever they're doing. the Cologne and, brothers that are yeah doing their bullshit. And Hornswoggle hasn't really done anything. Hornswoggle's and not even, done anything since it, he was Vince McMahon's illegitimate child. Yeah, that's he, what happened. Like even, even when he was there, like he really didn't do anything. He was a gimmick. He was like, funny on Swerved. Yeah, Swerved. He was funny when he popped up out of like some spaghetti noodles. Or yeah, shit. that was funny. Scary little shit here. <laughs> I like to see him fight Onslaught, though. Oh, my God. I feel like that's a fair match. That's the match of the year. Onslaught's the hand that May Young birthed versus Vince McMahon's illegitimate <laughs> half leprechaun child. <laughs> he was drunk in Ireland one night. Yeah, anyway. It just happened. Uh, Cameron uh, got let go, uh, which was one of the, the Funkasaurus guys. Yeah. Um, the other one, she's still there. Doing I, something. I oh, she's married to an old, so she's staying. Oh, okay. I mean, she's actually not that bad. I say that. Like her, her shoes are cool. Shit, though. Yeah, but they like, change colors. She's not the top of that division. Well, holy shit! <laughs> I mean, she, that's another one. She's stuck in a division. Yeah. that's damn loaded. Um, this one was kind of sad. Zeb Coulter. Yeah. Who, if you like old school fans, if you're listening. It's Dirty Dutch Mantel, yeah. um, who is actually like a genius, guys. Like, he's really smart when it comes to wrestling. Uh, and I think it was more they just didn't have anything for him right now. Um, so I, that one's kind of sad. I think he could go to another promotion and really help well, some see, stuff out. Well, see, he used out. to work for TNA. So I could see. Because I mean, TNA's getting a whole new like, thing going on. That could really, really help them. Anything's going to be able to help yeah. them. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm going to save that one. Uh, Barrett, Wade Barrett got let go. We all knew he was leaving anyway. Yeah. They just, they actually let him go a month early. That's all it amounted to. He was leaving at the end of June. They let him just go. might as well let him go yeah. with, with everything else. Um, and from everything we've heard, Barrett's like, he's walking away from wrestling for a little while. He said he'll return to wrestling when the time's right, but for right now, he's not going to wrestle. Yeah. Um, uh, the next two, one really surprised me. The other one makes sense. Kind of. Um, the other one that just came out today, actually, uh, was Christian. Yep. And what it is, because I know, like, if you have the network like I do, and Justin, when he comes over, we, we wear the network out. Um, because there's some holy shit funny stuff on there. Uh, but the Edge and Christian show uh, that totally reeks of awesomeness. One of uh, the best things of the network. so done. awesome. Yeah. Um, so Christian actually has just been let go from his wrestling contract stuff. And, and to be honest, I didn't know that he still had a wrestling contract. I, I knew he still had one, but I knew he had said he thought he was pretty much done wrestling. Yeah. Um, so, that's no surprise. He's still going to be there to do the show. Don't freak out. Like, I was at first, and then I read it. And then you read into it. And I'm it, like, okay, okay, okay fine, we're yeah. good. This was the one. It, I understand why, but at the same time, it shocked me. Because I thought this guy, they missed the boat with this one. Yeah, they Damian really Sandow got released, and they missed the boat with Sandow. Because Sandow was so over with the crowd. When he they were doing him with the miss angle, yep. he was so over. Um, they missed the boat completely with him. And uh, basically they just told him, you know, they didn't really have anything for him. And, you know, they were trying to freshen up the roster, which, you know, I don't blame them. I mean, to a point. But I feel like, you know, a year and a half ago, they really missed the boat yeah. with Sandow. Like, he could have been huge. And he's a good worker. 
Plus, he's smart. Um, I'd love to see him at Smoky Mountain. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was about to say. That's going to open up the you know the possibility for things like that. Yeah, I mean, uh, he's already been booked against Colt Cabana. Yep, uh, which at, the, is gonna be, at the Global Force show in New Jersey. Yeah, yeah. which is hell, man. Him and Colt Cabana, um, that'll be awesome. Uh, so, anyway, that was the releases this week. Um, we'll see what else happens. I'm going to go on a limb. I think Ryback's is coming. Mm-hmm. because And not because Ryback, like, look. I'm gonna be honest with you. This is a guy. TNA needs to go sign right back. They do. Like, I, and I know everybody's like, "Oh yeah, they're gonna sign the WWE." Jet. Look, right back is a beast and could be really good. He just, you know, look what he got stuck doing. Yeah, he he kind of got screwed, and then he went and fussed about contract issues. Which, if you read a lot of it, some of it he's right on. Yeah. Um, but you can't go say that. I mean, <laughs> you may be he may be in the right. But you but still can't go. You out. don't go and tell Vince McMahon how fucked up your contract is. You don't go tell Vince keep... McMahon he's wrong. Let's no, be honest. don't tell Vince he's wrong about anything. Um, that's a good way to keep your job. Like, yeah. don't don't tell Vince anything bad. Okay. Uh, also, I'd say Adam Rose is done because uh, he was already on a wellness suspension. Yeah. And sad situation. He got arrested. I think it was this morning. Or yesterday? It might have been yesterday, but Either it was a domestic way, he, he was violence a domestic dispute. dispute. Yeah. Um, I saw today where the judge wanted to put a restraining order on him to keep him away from his wife, and she begged for him not to because they have a special needs child. Really? And she begged for the judge not to, so he didn't and like gave him a $1,000 bond. So I'm sure he's made But more than likely, he's probably but done it anyway. I would say between the failed drug test and... Which was bullshit. I'm not going to get into it. Um... But his fail on the drug test was bullshit that they failed it. Well, that's fine that he failed it, but once they found out the reason why he failed it, that he should not have been suspended. No. Because um, he was, at one time, he was an addict. And the stuff that he tested positive for was the stuff the doctors were helping him to get clean and to stay clean. Uh, because he was such a bad addict, like, he couldn't come completely off yeah. of it, like, how they have to do it. Um, so that's a sad situation because if you knew like about him before he got the WWE, that dude is really, really good. Yeah. Um, so get off that shit for a minute because, you know, releases suck. Um, but it's part of the business. <laughs> okay, we watched episode two earlier. Yeah. Um, and if you've not seen it yet, you need to. Guys. But. Go. But. but yeah, yeah, yeah. Give them give the Legitimately, the when it says TV mature... You know, parental advisory, all that shit. Look, it's bad. Like, okay, like like WWE. You can say what you want. WWE's in the PGA or whatever. Like you this know, is not. This isn't. <laughs> this this makes South Park look like a bunch of pussies. I don't know about that. Oh, I'm telling you right now. Uh, I don't know. They've dropped more MFers here lately. You, you can't you can't be throwing shade at South Park. No, I love South Park, <laughs> but South Park doesn't have Ric Flair fucking a bear. That's true. They or don't. a rock. That's true. Or a tire on a swing. Yeah, or anything. Yeah, or he doesn't say him woo all the time. Or, or he just... Or the, or he took rock to the strip club. Yeah. On tonight's episode. And got him in a bar fight. Yeah. Yeah, I guys, mean, go check out WWE it's Camp. It's so good, guys. If, if that, if, you know, it's, if that's your kind of if that's your kind of humor, which obviously it's our kind of humor. If you listen to us and you listen to us all the way through, it's probably your kind of shit, Yeah, too. so go check it out. Like, if you have the network, go... Check out like, WWE it's Camp. It's so cool. Um, there, there's a lot, a lot of innuendos yeah. and a lot of... Like, it's hysterical, though. Just trust me. Go check out WWE Camp WWE. We're not going to talk real much about all this shit right here. Roman Reigns. Um, actually, okay, because we haven't talked since the pay-per-view, have we? Nope. Roman Reigns. <sighs> Hold your breath, because I'm going to give him a compliment. Roman Reigns had the best match of his career against AJ Styles at Playback. But... It was because of AJ Styles. Okay, it was, but it brought right, uh, brought right back, uh, Roman Reigns to that level. Yeah. Like Reigns, Reigns is doing better now that he's with AJ because AJ is that damn good. Yeah. Um, and that's not taking anything from Roman. Like I'm not like when when we've been bitching, like I'm not bitching about Roman the person because look like because this is you know they talked about this on another podcast. We don't know what's going on behind. Closed doors. We don't know what's going on backstage. Who's a douche bag? Who's, you yeah. know, who's acting like an ass? Who's got a drinking problem? Who's whatever? Because um, from there, all that I can tell, you know, Roman's a straight dude. Um, but my problem with how they've done Roman is the storyline, storyline itself. Not Roman itself. I actually like Roman Reigns. It's the booking. And we uh, said that on the last podcast. Yeah, but I wanted to specify that it's not, like, 
I think Roman's a good dude. I don't blame him for putting the title on him. I just think the storyline they did with him sucked. Um, but with that said, here was what we established earlier because we were watching Raw earlier because we've been slackers this week a little bit. Yeah. Um, Roman Reigns is actually doing a whole lot better, and he's actually getting over a little more right now, mm-hmm. uh, which is due to the fact AJ's that good and the Bullet Club effect. But we both agree, and maybe it's just us. Because we do have similar views on all this. I'm so over the damn Usos. Man. Like, I, it was, change something. Change something about what they do. I, I honestly, I don't even care if they change anything anymore. I don't want them there. Like, there's better teams that aren't getting the exposure that need it. Well, but they're getting exposure because of the family angle. I understand I that. I understand it, but, like, I, I still don't like it. Like, it's not going to change Why? anything. Why? Like, like here's the thing. Like, if you're going to be with Roman and Roman's got this whole... Roman Empire. Roman Empire anti-hero bullshit, how are you going to come out with your family and they're wearing all this fluorescent bullshit <laughs> trying to look like badasses? My problem is, and I know... <laughs> maybe maybe you can't have them go against the Bullet Club who are wearing black and white anyway. I hate the fact that they keep... They call everybody Oose. Yeah. Like, they can be the... the, the uh, God, what is his name? Tom... Whatever, he, the guy that does, like, the interviews and shit for WWE. The yeah. Guy, the whitest guy in America. And they call him Oos all the time. And I'm like, shut the hell up. Yeah. Like, I'm so over, like, and I like the Usos. Like, the Usos are actually really good in the ring. But, like, the whole character, they need to overhaul. And like, they, make them into badasses with Roman. And even, even like, when they, they come out and they do the little Uso thing. It was cool at first. No one cares now. It was cool at first. Nobody gives a shit now because <laughs> no. you have these other tactics, like Enzo and Cass. Or like, or you still got New Day. You've got the Vaude villains. I was going to say, New Day. Uh, first off, by the way, side note, because I don't have it wrote down, Big Cass is going to be a fucking superstar. Yep. That dude is seven foot tall, and you can't teach that. And that guy can talk, too. It's not just in, I love Enzo, and I know Vince likes Enzo still too, which is good because I don't want Enzo to fall apart. Yeah. Because eventually, Big Cass is gonna go on his own. Yeah. Big Cass is gonna be a player. And, and I'm see, telling that's you. the thing. I I love them as a tag team, but I know that Big Cass has the better future. Cass has. A he guy. has the upside. Because I mean, a lot of that's because he is so big, and he's he's got this really good hybrid thing because he can talk so well. Enzo is. Probably the best talker since The Rock. Oh, yeah. But in the ring, he can't be as good. You know what I mean? No, I mean, he's good for what he is, but he's not seven foot tall. Exactly. <laughs> like, <laughs> he's mean, not a monster like Cass a, is. He's a straight bona fide stud. Yeah. But he's not a bona fide stud that stands seven foot tall and looks like Big Cass. Exactly. If you don't realize how big Big Cass is, go look at him and Jericho standing off against each other. And I love Jericho. Jericho's a damn Hall of Famer, and he is one of the best at, at, ever that, at what he does. I mean, what he says is true. Yep. Big Cass is a monster. Yeah. But, anyway, we got off on the sidetrack a little bit because, damn, Big Cass, he, he, he won me over completely now. Like, I loved him anyway, but then I was worried when Enzo yeah. out, he was going to get off the shuffle. Also, Bullet Club and WWE. Um, fuck, I love it. Yeah, I'm a fan. Like, I, I don't give a shit if you turn AJ heel. I don't care what you do with this. Keep them together. You don't, 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 don't fuck this up. I know the whole thing is where they're going to screw AJ. And, and I hate this, like all these, and I'm not even putting us in this category. This elitist group of fucking internet wrestlers that are like, are you talking oh, about who you got in the fight with the other day? Not just that, okay. but that's part of it. Like, all oh, uh. WWE is just going to turn it into the NWO or the Bullet Club's already turning it into the NWO. Like, fuck off. Like, they're, they have to do a little bit different in the WWE. You can't do everything the way indie things do it. That's why indie is what it is. Yeah. It has to be different. You have to appreciate it for what the fuck it is instead of having everything the exact same because otherwise it'd be boring to watch. Hallelujah! Like, go ahead. <sighs> I feel like, like I'm like, in. Ch- this is wrestling church right here. Like, here's the thing. Like, you can't have. Okay, you can't have. We'll say uh, Gallows, Anderson, and AJ doing the same thing that the rest of the Bullet Club are doing in Japan or Ring of Honor or wherever else. Like, there has to be some kind of separation. And I don't mean like tier list is in like, oh, some of them are up here and some of them are down here. And Chase Owens isn't really in the Bullet Club. Bullshit like that. I'm saying there has to be different storylines. There have to be 
a little bit of character difference depending on your promotion because it has to fit into what that promotion does. That's what separates them. Obviously, a place like uh, Pro Wrestling Guerrilla is going to be a lot more hardcore than the fucking WWE. Like, you can't have the same thing. It's like, you know, when ECW came back with the WWE, it wasn't the same ECW. No, because it no. couldn't be. No. And it never, like, you have to understand that promotions have to do, like, they have to follow certain guidelines within their promotion. WWE is a public traded company. Okay? It is on the stock market. It is stuff like that. They have to keep everything balanced a little bit. They can't do everything like they did in the Attitude Era. Yeah, like, look. It is big business. Like, what? look, you, you can be pissy about Vince, and I, I wish it wouldn't be as PG as it is. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it's not going back to what it was before, and it's not going to be ECW. It's not going to be Pro Wrestling Guerrilla. It's not going to be the Indies, guys. No. We, as fans, we've WWE's gotten better. Yeah. You, like, you hear the chants at WWE events now that you never would have heard 10 years ago. Yeah. You get to see wrestlers who never would have had a chance 10 years ago. At the same time, you can't have Kevin Owens where he'd cut a promo in Pro Wrestling Grill where he'd tell, you know, Sami Zayn, El Generico, fuck you, go to Mexico, you damn wet back, shit like that. Well, they can say what and do whatever they want. You can't do that now. And, like, that's, that's what bothers me. I... I love indie wrestling. Oh, I love indie wrestling. So much more than WWE. But at the same time, you have to appreciate the WWE. And I still love WWE, yeah. too. You have you have to give it credit when credit's due. And the fact that they've taken, you know, they've taken the chance to go get the Bullet Club and try to maintain, you know... Look, it is what I said. What, and I've made this statement on here before. Triple H is, is, is the man when it comes to this. Triple H wants to have... The most talented guys in the world that wrestle in this company. And he's, you know, it's been happening. I mean, damn, guys. I mean, <laughs> it, it is what we all wanted. Everybody talked for years. I want to see this matchup. I want to see yeah. this. Look, guys, eventually, a year from now, however long, six months from now, we're going to get AJ Styles versus Seth Rollins. Yeah. Holy shit, guys. I want that match so bad. I might sell my first born child to see that match. We're going to have... Maybe not. Yeah, My wife's six, raising her eyebrows, but you know now, what I mean. Six months from now, we're gonna, speech, we're gonna have we're gonna have Shinsuke Nakamura. No, God. Think about that. Next WrestleMania, more than likely Shinsuke is gonna be in a match with someone fucking massive. Think about Bobby that. Roode's coming. Eric Young's there, Think which about is it. funny. On a side note, by the way, that they're advertising <laughs> Samoa Joe versus Eric Young, the first confrontation. I'm just saying, if you go back and look at some TNA shit, they've met. Okay, yeah. <laughs> that's all I'm throwing out there. Anyway. But, like, you have to, like, I understand, you know, New Japan's what it is and Ring of Honor's what it is. And, well, like, things like that, like, they're amazing. And we've seen phenomenal matches on there. But let's be honest here. Everyone's going to watch WrestleMania. Yeah, here's Why the, would we not want to see those greats be at that stage? New Japan is huge. It's the second biggest wrestling company in the world. Um, But... There is one stage above all else, whether you like it or not, and I know there'll be some that'll probably hate us after this podcast if they listen to it. Um, the biggest stage in the world is WWE. Period. Yeah. I mean, you can bitch, you can moan, fuss about their product. Like, you, like that doesn't that have is, to be your favorite, but you have to realize they are above everyone else. And but, that's where everybody wants to go to. I mean, yeah. Now, there'll be some exceptions. The Bucks are kind of an exception. Yeah. Because the Bucks... Or what they are. Yeah. And you they're they're an indie tag team who can't get away with the stuff they do and now and I don't in think WWE. I don't think they would want to. No, no, no. They're and that that's kick. why they have the contract they do. Yeah, they've got the biggest ring of honor contract ever made. Yeah. Um but my thing and I was gonna mention this, you know, people are bitching. I know you got into it with the guy the other day about Chase being in the bullet club. Well, he's not really in the bullet club. Bullshit. Chase is in the bullet club. Here's what everybody forgets. And everybody wants to bitch about, oh, it's turning the NWO, they're adding all these members. Well, what nobody wants to remember is there was other sectors of the NWO. First off, and just in America, you wound up having NWO black and white. Yep. You had NWO, Wolfpack, black and red, which was when Sting and Lex Luger and all them went there. But also when you still had NWO white and black when it first started, you had the Wolfpack, which consisted of Nash Hall and Six at the time yep. or whatever X Pac. Well, then what nobody remembers is like everybody's all oh, well, they had a this member, this member, they had this guy. 
Well, and then they bitch about the Bullet Club having a guy here and a guy here and guys in Mexico and chases in the NWA and, uh, you know, the other guys, New Japan, Pro Wrestling, Gorilla, Ring of Honor now, a lot. Because um, we're going to talk about that in a minute. The NWO had Great Muda and Masahiro Chono and Scott Norton to an extent with the Japan stuff. Yeah. They basically had NWO Japan. Yeah. And nobody, like, everybody bitches, well, they had Virgil and Horace Hogan and all this bullshit. Well, they also had Great Muda and Masahiro Chono who were damn selling out venues as yeah. NWO Black and White in Japan. Like, that's what people aren't realizing. It's like, it's like now because... It's so much easier to see promotions all over the world. Everyone likes to think, oh, they're turning into the NWO. But you didn't realize that back then, they were doing the same thing. Yeah, and here's the thing like, about that. Like, there's no difference. Like, everybody wants to bitch about Bullet Clubs. The, they're getting watered down because they're adding all these people. Okay, but you look at what they've done. AJ Styles, Doc Gallows, Carl Anderson, they're still the Bullet Club guys. I don't give a shit what they name them. They're still going to be associated yeah. with Bullet Club no matter what they call them. They're calling them the club now. I mean, it's pretty And obvious. they're throwing the two sweet me yeah. all the time. Okay. So. They're in WWE. Finn Balor. He does the two sweet me sign a lot. Everybody knows he was in the original Bullet Club. He's in NXT. Yep. Okay. I can't remember the two guys' names, but there's guys down in Mexico that wrestle for like, you know, AAA or CMLL. One of those down there. They're Bullet Club guys. Yep. Then you got the Bucks, Kenny Omega, Bad Luck Fallet. Uh, uh, Scott Hall, son, Cody, mm-hmm. um, Jeff Jarrett even is a member of the Bullet Club, but you have all those guys that pretty much stay over in Japan, or they do some Ring of Honor shows. But then you have Chase Owens. He's a member. Kiss my ass. Um, and he's not Virgil either. You fuckers. Yeah, come call me out on that bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Justin's nicer than I am. I'll kill your whole damn family. Anyway. Chase is an NWA. Okay, look what they're doing. Now, here you go. This was the next thing we got wrote down. This past weekend, we got two new members of the Bullet Club now. Pay-per-view Sunday night. Everybody thought when the lights went out and the Bucks showed up with shirts, Bullet Club shirts, and Jay Lethal and Colt Cabana were in the ring. Everybody thought, oh shit, it's Jay Lethal or Colt Cabana or both. Lights go out. Guess what? It's neither, and they just got Adam Cole, baby. Adam Cole became a member of the Bullet Club on Sunday night. Dude is a former Ring of Honor world champion. Dude is a straight-up killer in the ring. I love Adam Cole. And, like, let's talk about this. And I'm not going to, like, go back and rant more about this, but all these people that are in the Bullet Club... They're all fucking champions. Like, they're yes. all top guys. It's not the NWO where you just added fucking anyone. Yeah, Virgil never had a title. Horace Hogan never had a title. Like, let's think about that for a second. Yeah. Like, it's not like they're picking anyone and everyone to join. These yeah. guys are elite. That's why they're there. That's why they're in the Bullet Club. Yeah, you look at everybody they've added. Okay, Jeff Jarrett. That one speaks for itself. Yep. He founded TNA, guys. And not to mention all the titles he's had for a 20-plus year career. And now now Global Force Now he's got Global thing. Force. Okay, you look at the Bucks, Kenny Omega. I mean, that's flat out simple. Yeah. Now, you throw in Carl Anderson, Doc, AJ, and Finn speak for themselves. Uh-huh. Arguably the two best wrestlers on the planet. You know, throw in Chase Owens. He's a three-time former NWA World heavy, World Junior Heavyweight Champion. He is fourth on the all-time list of holding that title for the, that many days. Guys, there's some big-ass names on that list. Like him or not, you can say he doesn't deserve it, whatever. Chase Owens can fucking go in the ring, and unless you can get in there and do any better, you need to keep your damn mouth shut because I'm going to tell you right now, Chase Owens can flat-out go. Ask Davey Richards. Ask Facade. Ask AJ Styles. Ask AJ Styles. Because we're going to talk about that match in a minute because of Chris Harmon's question. I know we're getting on a rant, but like it pisses me off when people want to talk shit and they think they're some damn smart indie wrestling fan. Like You can have your opinion, that's fine. But when somebody has a different opinion and you act like you're better than them, that's bullshit. Okay, off my rant a little bit. So, everybody thought Adam Cole's a member. It's over and done with. Nope. We got another member of the Bullet Club, so there you go, you Milani babies. You can suck on that one again. Adam Page becomes a new member of the Bullet Club. I love Adam Page. Young dude, seen him in person a couple times. 
Dude is awesome. I want him in NWA yeah, Smoky Mountain. Say, I th- hope, I hope th- we can get him to Smoky Mountain. Look, I threw it out there already. I want to see him and Chase Owens tag team together um, in Smoky Mountain. There you go. There's a good idea. Anyway, I love the fact they added these guys because they are branching out their brand. You've got guys Ring of Honor guys. You've got guys who are New Japan guys. Mexico guys. You've got, you know, Chase is the NWA guy. I mean... They have people everywhere. And, like, here's the thing, too, with with Chase. And, again, like, I'm not going to keep staying on this, but, you know, we've talked about this before. We've been Chase fans since I've been banana. going with you. Yeah. And, like, here's the thing. People didn't used to like Chase. No. We were the only Chase fans back in the day. Well, he was a bad guy. Since this Bullet Club thing, there's, there's people at these shows that have Bullet Club shirts on that I know aren't, like, real hardcore wrestlers. But that's growing the brand even more. Like, yeah. they're not hardcore fans, but, like, Chase has grown the Bullet Club around here. And, you know, all these other promotions he goes because, you know, there might be fans that don't know about that yet. And that's just more exposure. Oh, yeah. I'm with you. Anyway, that's our soapbox for the Bullet Club thing. Now, let's talk about something cool as shit. Um, this was fucking awesome. If you, I know if you're listening from that group, you, you know about this. EC3, Ethan Carter the third, um, cut a promo. Yeah. Nobody knew he was going to be there at the Evolve show the other night. Um, and the match was, uh, Drew Galloway was in the match. And uh, he was actually fighting Johnny Gargano, yeah. I think. Um, EC3 came out, and obviously they beat the shit out of Johnny Gargano. Um which was cool because you had these two TNA guys against the WWE NXT guy in the yep. ring time. And uh, EC3 cut a promo that, you know, I know everybody's going to, a lot of people are going to shit on it because he's from TNA. I know TNA's, look, it, it's at a low point, but, but. But, I mean, we've seen EC3 in person. The dude can I like fucking EC3. go. And like, he's a cool dude. Yeah. Um, EC3's promo, though, like he said. You know, the King of Kings screwed it up. You know, you've got two guys with him and Drew Galloway that WWE didn't use right. Missed the boat on, really, because I loved Drew Galloway when he was in WWE. Yep. I thought they missed the chance of making him a superstar. And, uh, like, he, for a good, like, probably seven minutes, he's EC3 just going off roasted the deep end. them. And, you know, talked about Triple H missing out, calling him the King of Kings. Talked about uh, Bill DeMott. Uh, mm-hmm. which is Hugh Morris, the guy that he actually has been fired now because I guess he was kind of an asshole. But they talked about him. Um, and basically, almost, because TNA can't compete with him. Like, I'll admit to that, even though I, like, I'll defend TNA a lot. Um, because, shit, I don't want nobody to lose their job. Like, everybody's like, TNA needs to just go away. Well, kiss my ass. How'd you, uh, wherever you work needs to go away, too. Now, how's that yeah. feel? Exactly. Like, don't shit on people losing their jobs. Um with that said, EC3 cuts his promo, kind of does like the TNA versus WWE kind of shit, yep. and uh, actually talking about Bullet Club, I think it was Adam Page actually came out. I think you're right. I think it was Adam Page. Um, anyway, whatever, um, but it, it was a really cool angle, I thought, um, plus, because Evolve's been working with WWE for that the Cruiserweight tournament thing, mm-hmm. um, which made it kind of cool that for you know, even if it's just for that one night and you got a little exposure, you did have the WWE versus TNA angle going on at an Evolve show. Yep. Um, Which so is like really kind of like the middle ground between them, I guess, in a sense. Kind of, it is. Yeah. Because, you know, a lot of the TNA guys do indie bookings yeah. and stuff. And the WWE has started using more guys and stuff from yeah. those shows. Uh, so it's a cool moment. Go check it out. Um, we'll see what happens with it. I mean, probably nothing like major. Don't get me wrong. We're not going to have a brand war between TNA no. and WWE right now. But that's, you know, <laughs> I don't want TNA going to have business. But that, they don't need to go down that road. Um, anyway, so that's kind of it for the wrestling shit. I don't know. We've talked a lot about wrestling. Like an hour and a half worth of just wrestling shit. Um, so we're going to hit high spots with some of this shit. Uh, we got NBA stuff right now. Um, obviously, playoffs going on. Um, we already know two teams in each of the conference finals, uh, Western Conference finals. We know we got the Warriors. Um, and, and more than likely, even though I love my Thunder, more than likely the Spurs are going to be there. I don't think – I think your Thunder are going to make it. You, I know. Shocking. I, just, I mean, you might be right, but uh, – The Thunder are going. 
Are they? They're they 9165. Let's go! <laughs> Holy shit. Here you go. I'm glad you're sitting down. Hurry up and spit. spit. All right. You good? Yeah. I hope the Thunder beat the Warriors. <laughs> oh my god. High five. Hey. <laughs> Fuck you, Draymond Green. <laughs> <laughs> It's not really. I, I don't. I don't like you all either. But Draymond Green is the son of Satan. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> he can kiss my ass. Uh, so more. So yeah, we've got anyway. Uh, we got so our Western lineup. Apparently, we got the Western lineup. Unless like the Spurs miraculously come back with ten minutes to go. Yeah. And erase like a twenty-six point lead. Or if they do, then the Spurs will go on. <laughs> um, because they'll win Game Seven. Um, Hopefully your boys don't screw this shit up. Yeah, hopefully. Because I hate the Spurs, too. <laughs> anyway, so apparently we're going to have Thunder Warriors, which, here you go, live moment. How do you feel about that series? Um, Man, it's – Warriors are just tough. Yeah. Like, we, like, like, we'll discuss that in a minute, kind of. Like, getting more in depth about yeah. how I feel about the Warriors. Um, and then, of course, my team is in the Eastern Conference Finals. Yep. Who – and, like, I know, like, there's going to be some people – be like, oh, yeah, LeBron and all this shit. Look, if Cleveland shoots the way Cleveland's been shooting, Cleveland's going to win the championship, guys, even if it's Golden State. If Cleveland can shoot like they're shooting, they play defense as good, if not better, than everybody else left in this thing. And, you know, whatever. Cleveland's there. Um, I kind of personally hope they play Toronto. Um, Toronto got a 3-2 lead on Miami. They play tomorrow night. I hope um, Miami comes back. I've, well, I've, and, I've really yeah, let's just transition to that. Like, I, but I really like Demar Derozan. Yeah, um, I do. I do too. But the the stuff D or D Wade's been doing this year, D Wade has. It's like I told yeah. you before we start. He is solidifying his spot as one of the best to ever do it. Yeah, a hundred percent agree with that. Um, like you know, much his, respect. Like he's doing this shit his, right now. His clutch numbers right now, best in the league. And what he's doing, you know, Hassan Whiteside's out now. Um, Bosch is out. Yeah, and he's carrying that team. Um, not to, you know, Gore and uh, Drogic, however you say yeah. it. Yeah. Dude, he's playing out of his mind, too. He is. But Wade, Wade is really, like, those 38, however old knees. Like, man, he's, he's still he's doing balling. it, man. Um, he's, so he's looking like he should play for the Spurs the way he's just, like, defying time right now, man. Yeah, yeah, really. Apparently, the Spurs' time has ran out, though. Um, yeah, man, Father Time's collecting. Holy shit. <laughs> The Slim like Reaper I, has showed up. I feel up. like when I see like the damn highlights from this game that Tim Duncan's going to be rolling down the thing in the wheelchair. Yeah. Um, anyway, so moving from that to we got the MVP award announced this week. And, and we were kind of kind of bitching about this okay, beforehand. Okay, before somebody goes off, hear us out, okay? Kurt, Stephen Curry won the MVP award. He did? And he won it unanimously. He he got every single vote. Which is okay. shitty. Okay, here's my thing. It's not shitty in the fact that he got all those votes. He deserved it. And I'm a LeBron guy. And I do believe, like, people who want to jump on LeBron about Le- 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 LeBron said, yeah. what he said is true. It is. There is, like, the MVP thing is kind of, you have to give it to Curry. Like, I'm not saying LeBron needed to get it. But if you look at what, most valuable stands for versus best player or most outstanding player, I see them differently. If you take Steph Curry off the Warriors, the Warriors still do the really Warriors well. The Warriors are still in the Western Conference. Fine. Okay, I'll put it like this. If Steph Curry's not on the Warriors and they play the Thunder in this next series, the Thunder beat the Warriors. I agree. But they still make it to the Western Conference. Fine. I agree. Now, retrospect, and I know y'all are going to jump my shit because of LeBron. Take LeBron off of Cleveland. Don't get me wrong. Kyrie, Kevin Love are good. They don't make it past the second round. No, they 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 lost to the Hawks. I agree. Um, lost to a Hawks team that really didn't have anyone. No, I mean the Hawks are a decent team, but they don't have a guy, like no. one guy. Um, but with that said, I see what LeBron was saying. Like if you take LeBron off the Cavs, they suck. I mean, just I mean they might yeah. make the playoffs. They they aren't the one seed. They haven't swept both series. Yeah. Um, like they have now. Uh, and obviously we'll see who they play. But with that said, our argument with it is not that Curry got it and got it every vote. It was that... He what, he shouldn't have been the first one to ever get it. He should not have been the first guy to get it. You name, you name us. No. Whatever. Not, it, like, not even a little bit. A couple years ago when LeBron was like going nuts all season and averaged like 38 and 7. Yeah. I mean, those are ridiculous numbers. Or the Shaq. 
Or yeah, Shaq MVP. And like LeBron came within one. Yeah, and that was all because some shithead New York writer he voted for voted Mello. for Carmelo Anthony. Like, look, whatever. Carmelo Anthony's a great scorer. Like, here's the thing. Like, Steph's you know had an amazing year or whatever. Oh, but he broke his own record. I don't like. It's not that Curry got it. It's that. Okay, you gave him every vote. Yeah, he shouldn't have been unanimous because you have, like, Kawhi Leonard gets votes every single year, as he should. Um, LeBron actually finished second. LeBron should get votes every year, finished as third. he should. Um, Westbrook should get votes every year. Durant should get votes every Ego. year. Lillard. Yeah. they Like, you've got players like that, that that deserve at least a few votes every single year. You could say D. Wade. Yeah. Like, you I can't mean, argue that. I can make those arguments. I understand Curry's had like this phenomenal, amazing season. We never seen somebody shoot the way Curry does. But my argument's not that he got every vote. My argument is he should why have been has the... it took him, taken, took him, whatever. Taken. I know it's taken, yeah. but damn it, we're from Virginia. Kiss my ass. Um, why is it taken this long to get a unanimous to get a unanimous winner? Whenever we've had seasons where Shaq's dominated. Where Jordan, you can't tell me Jordan shouldn't have had a season where he was yeah. the unanimous selection. LeBron, I know has because I've been a LeBron fan, so I followed it more. I know that. Um, you know, some of these times when Duncan has won it, I mean, guys, there are seasons where there's one player dominated the whole. Thing. I mean, it was like Tracy McGrady said. A lot of it, like you, you can, yeah, you well, can honestly say this. The league's get, watered let's, down. Let's talk about this. Like the league is watered down now, and he wasn't talking about your upper echelon no, stars. No, it is nothing again. Like you know, Stephen A. Smith and some of them are going fucking crazy. But Stephen A. Smith's a fucking idiot. Let's be honest. Here. I thought I like him. I, I really don't. No, I don't. I think him and Skip Bayless are both fucking morons. See, they are on there. I never liked Skip, but I kind of miss Skip now. They are on there for the sole purpose. People like them are on there. You for knew the so- Skip left yeah. ESPN, right? Yeah, they're on there for the sole purpose to generate people talking. Yeah. Whether it's whether it's positive or negative, no, that's, that's their true. whole job. Huh. And I'm not saying they're bad at their job. No, I'm saying they they, what supposed they to. need to stop acting like they're experts when they're fucking clueless. And like. The fact that Stephen A. Smith is arguing against one of the greatest players, like I told you before we started, would have been probably behind Kobe and Michael Jordan for best ever if his fucking knees didn't give out in Tracy McGrady. No, I agree with you. We talked about this. Um, no, LeBron would have still been great. Curry would still be great. Durant would still be great. It's not those guys. The problem with it now is, and we discussed this, the problem with it is we have all these kids – who are going to school for one year because they have to. And they're not even going to classes. No. They're just getting their one year out of the way so they can go to the NBA. Yeah. Which is, like, I understand. Like, here's my problem with it. I think you should do the NBA like you do baseball. If a kid comes out of high school and he wants to go pro, then let him go pro, guys. Yeah. We shouldn't hold somebody back. If you're 18 years old and you can go be the number one draft pick in the NBA draft, or hell, if you can be the number 31 draft pick, whatever, draft pick in the draft at 18 years old, that's a life-changing thing. And everybody can say, well, they need to go to school and get their degree. How many damn guys who have made an NBA have a degree, really? Yeah. How many, I mean, that's in, no In wrong. any sport. In any sport. Well, yeah. I, know, I know one of the big stories a couple of years ago was Larry Fitzgerald went back and finished online classes to get a degree. That was a huge deal. The, right. the fact that he got a degree. I mean, football's a little bit different, obviously, because, I mean, like, I know people like Sam Bradford have, like, psychology degrees and stuff like that. Like, yeah. Football's different because... But they have to stay three you years. You have to stay. You have to That's stay three thing. years. Which is my argument. Here's my thing. I feel like if the kid wants to come out of high school, they should be able to go straight from high school to the NBA. I agree. However, if you go to college, you should at least have to stay, at the minimum, two years. I think you should have to stay three. I think I think two would be a good number. I mean, like, three is maybe pushing it a little bit for some guys. I can but, see that. But two, because like we said before this started, you don't have a proper farm league-like system. No, the big league like, sucks. You don't have what you know the majors have, like baseball. Yeah, you don't have the, the farm systems, like single-A, triple-A, double-A, yeah. all this stuff. So, so, you know, the NBA has always used college as a farm system in a sense. But they're not letting, like, okay. But they're not yeah. letting them develop enough. Like, they're giving like them If you way... look at farm systems in Major League Baseball, unless you're just some stud, like, once-in-a-lifetime player, Bryce Harper, Mike Trout, you work your way up through the minors before you ever get there. Usually you I play mean, two at, or three seasons. Look at someone like, you know, obviously we're Braves fans. Look at someone like Dansby Swanson who dominated at Vanderbilt 
and he's uh, yeah. still not make made it yeah. up. He just you know, to the big leagues yet. Double a, he's a double A, and then the shortstop ahead of him is at triple A, and those guys are both hitting like four hundred. Yeah. But like, still, they're they're paying their dues and they're working up and getting better as players and growing as people before that they way make they're it. They're major league ready. Yeah, that way so they're a lot more mature when they get to the. A league. lot of these kids that are coming out after one year in college aren't mature enough, aren't no. ready, and aren't refined enough. Like it's not that they're not good players and aren't going to be good players. Their skills are not refined enough to go against grown men. Look at someone like uh, Joel Embiid. I mean, take his injuries aside. Right. Like the dumb shit that he did on Twitter. Oh, yeah. Like as a 19 year old who just got like a max contract. Yeah. And he like immediately just like fucks up. Yeah. Like Okafor this Yeah. Okafor went stupid, stupid. And I, and like, I don't like Duke, but Okafor was a beast. And I, I like, I don't blame him for taking Okafor. But, I mean, you look at his maturity level, obviously it wasn't where it needed to be because he kept doing dumb shit. Um, but, I mean, that's my whole... Like, when he says watered down NBA, I think some people took stuff a little too serious. And uh, I think, you know, they, they jumped on the bandwagon and wanted to throw McGrady under the bus when I don't think McGrady meant... He didn't mean it the way they everybody wanted to take it because it made it a better story. Yeah. I don't think he was necessarily taken away from Curry. I mean, he was saying, look, they're playing against some shitty teams. Now, that's not to take away from the Spurs, the Thunder, the Warriors, the Cavs, the Heat, the Raptors. Those teams are good. Yeah. Those teams would have been good back then. He's talking about the 76ers. Yeah. The <laughs> the Nets, the Pistons. Yeah. Your teams um, that are like, they've been tanking for five years and have yet to improve. And I know the Pistons made the playoffs, but shit. They're... Like, they're, <laughs> like, it was like, you know, we talked about in the last podcast, like, just weak all the way around. Yeah. yeah like, and, that, and that's not knocking, like, Cleveland, or that's not knocking, like, your no, top-tier no. teams, but, like, your divisions are getting weaker and weaker besides, like, your, your few, like, star because, teams. well, you have all these 19-year-old kids, because everybody wanted to bitch, and, well, there's just a bunch of 18-year-old kids who aren't ready for NBA. Well, now we have 19-year-old kids who aren't ready for the NBA because, one, they don't give a shit for their one year in school. Yeah. I mean, they know they're leaving. The kid uh, that played at LSU, Sammons. Yeah. He's going to be the number one pick probably this year, and he's great. Like, if you watch him, he's legit. Yeah. But he never even went to class. Like, it came out. Like, he yeah. didn't go to class. He didn't even – they didn't go play in a NCAA – Term, I think it was the NIT. Yeah. They didn't even go play in it because they knew he then never went to class. I mean, you know, that's my problem with the NBA being watered down. Um, you want to talk about the Ghost concert really quickly? Yeah, I could. Um, obviously, as Obviously, you guys know, wait a minute. Obviously, y'all failed me. Didn't get me money. Yeah. I didn't get to go. So, I'm but, disappointed um, in y'all, so Justin can talk now. Because uh, I don't have any experiences. Obviously, we uh, we didn't record the podcast like last week, but I'll brush on this. Uh, saw Ghost. Uh, last week, Wednesday, at the Tennessee Theater. Venue's absolutely beautiful. One of the best venues I've ever been in as far as, like, an atmosphere. It was built in, like, the 20s, and it's got this, like, really Gilded Age feel to it, uh, if I'm, like, talking smart, I guess. But, <laughs> wow. uh, yeah. Um, it was them in person. Persons is band out of London. Look like they're straight out of the 70s. Like, they're, they're incredible, and they know what they're doing. Um... Got to meet them after the show, hung out with them, you know, bought a record, kind of just hung out with them and chilled out. But Ghost put on an amazing show, as I knew they would. Uh, mm. Lexi's friend, my girlfriend that went with me, her friend actually got to be one of the two nuns that got on stage and she got to meet the whole band unmasked, which was unheard of and not giving any spoilers away. But it was, you know, if you read on the internet, you know who they are by now. But uh, <laughs> yeah, show was incredible. Um, one of the best bands I've seen. They. It's weird if you if you know anything about Ghost, they have this really, really really cool shtick. But as the show goes on, they loosen up. You get to see their personalities more, and uh, yeah, like I, I couldn't be happier with the show, really and truly. Like all the way around, it was it was phenomenal. Yeah, I'm jealous. Yeah, I guess we could uh, quickly move into the questions. Yeah, we will talk questions. Um. We got some good questions. Like, you want to do the Twitter question first? Yeah, I'll do the Twitter question. Um, this is coming from our boy Drew, as always, hooking us up. Ram didn't hook us up this week. They made out a game, get rained out or something. I don't know. Oh, well. Uh, anyway, this comes Suck, from Drew. Ram. Summer plans. What are your summer plans? Uh, my summer plans? Um, I'm going to work 
<laughs> I mean, I got damn a job. me too. I got a job. Shit, was it? I mean, yeah. I got kids in a house and no mortgage. Um, me no, too. I mean, aside from working, obviously. Um, I I, I'm actually going on a field trip tomorrow. You are. You are. I'm going to see a movie with my daughter. I, I know you and class. I have like entertained the thought of maybe going to Rasselcade. Yeah, but that's November. Yeah, like that's, that's still a ways summer. away. Yeah. We may still look at that. They're, they're naming people that are going to be there. Yeah, it's and it's pretty yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, anyway, I guess uh, obviously we're going to wrestling shows. All the ones we just named, um, we're going this week at Road Warrior Animal and them. Um, may see about going to the cancer show. I'd li- I'd like to go just yeah. because it's a good cause. Um, we got the Mad Viking meet and greet thing. Coming yeah, up. that's uh, it's like next month, isn't it? No, it's this month. Is it this month? It's this month. Oh, okay. Yeah, so we got that plan. That'll um, be fun. Uh, my summer plans. I think I might go to the beach this year. We're going to the beach. I think we're taking a family trip to the beach. Uh, when are you going? I'm not sure. Yet. Dad hasn't okay. decided. We're to hook something up. Okay. But uh, definitely doing that. We talked about. I think Dad and I might go to a Black Label Society show in That'd Atlanta. Be awesome. Uh. Talked about doing that. This isn't really summer, but Gojira's going on tour. And if I make enough money within like the next couple weeks, I'm buying two VIP tickets to meet that whole band. I will fucking do that. So that'll be cool. Um, that, probably just like a shitload of concerts in the beach and obviously working at Man Farms. Yeah. Come down and see me Recording get some pod- produce. Recording podcasts. Yeah, and writing blogs. Like that'll be yeah. my summer and probably a lot of video games. Um, also. <laughs> Woody and Buzz equal euphemisms. Yeah. Yeah. Like let's like we talked about this before, like Disney, like those dudes that ride everything and like Pixar, all of them, like they are all a bunch of perverts. They, they always perverts, have been. Yeah. So they've always snuck shit like that in. Yeah. Like I don't even think it's a question. Yeah. Yeah. I love that though. I do too. It's like you have Buzz and Woody. Because you have like when you grow up you realize things like that. And yeah. it, it makes it that much cooler. Like you start seeing something like oh, Like man, you you understand it on a different level. I didn't level. understand that when yeah. I was little. Uh, Let's talk about the big question. Well, I mean, we got a couple of different ones. Let's do. Chris, you want to do Chris Harmon's first? Yeah. Who else you got? Your mom. Oh yeah. Your mom's been sending me messages. Yeah. Your mom. <laughs> she sent me messages. Um, Chris Harmon. This is a great question. Uh, Elgin. I actually fucked up the spelling. Elgin versus <laughs> Kincaid. He says Elkin. Uh, Elgin versus Kincaid. Probably the second best match in NWA Smoky Mountain history. Uh, Chase versus AJ would be the first one. Agree or disagree? If not, no, not two. What is? Um, I'm obviously for me. I'm gonna agree with him on the first one. Like AJ Chase, even though this one was amazing. AJ Chase for me still number one. And, and even when we talked about earlier, that's the best wrestling match I've ever seen in person. Yeah, one um, of the best matches I've seen ever, but definitely the best in person. AJ Styles and Chase last year at Collision Course was untouchable. I'm gonna probably say this is number two. Probably. This probably is number two in Smoky Mountain history. Um, okay. Some of the CWA matches may have been close. Because um, I know, like, Robbie and Tony had some great matches. Like, yeah. we're talking hour long matches. Yeah. Um, I will say, and because I didn't want to say this one because I feel like somebody listens to us, especially if it's the first time bringing it up. Well, they're just kissing Chase Owens' ass. Um, one Chase versus AJ is my number one. Like, it's not going to change. Um, Chase versus Davey Richards the first time mm-hmm. when Chase kind of got put on the map because Davey Richards was the Ring of Honor cha- heavyweight champion at yeah. the time. And for, it was like 35 minutes they went. And it, it was what made Chase into a star. Yeah. Um, And kind of made everybody realize, look, this, this kid's legit. That match is up there. It is up there really, really well. I definitely think Jason and Michael Elgin's second for me. They probably are second for me. Like, that match was phenomenal all the way through. Like I said, you had the crowd participation. You had, you know, everyone's chanting five more minutes, and, and Jason goes above his pride as a as just a straight wrestler to stay in character and say, no, this yeah. is my belt. I'm leaving. Um, I did so, my job. Yeah, I, I'm going to agree. Elgin Kincaid is number yeah. two, I think. Um, the, it was awesome. It could be... A, that match could have been on any card in the world. And, like, Morgan uh, Gibson, uh, who he's a huge, like, Ring of Honor guy who comes to the shows that I talk to all the time, um, he said the same thing. Like, he sent me a message at night or whatever, and he was like, 
the Ch- uh, the Jason Elgin match. That that match could have been on any Ring of Honor yep. card anywhere. Jason's actually going to be on some Ring of Honor cards this summer too. Just so you know, um, I actually found out the other day which ones, and he's got two for sure. Mm-hmm. And they said depending on how it goes, they may book him for more. So he may actually wind up getting to be like the dark match for the pay per view. That'd be really cool. Um, so you know, there's that's a big deal. So what that's questions did my mother send you? Your mother did really well. Oh, wait, man, I can't read that one to you. That'd be wrong. Ha <laughs> ha. <laughs> I love your mom. Anyway, this question is for both of you. You may have already done it. If you could bring any wrestler who is no longer active to make a comeback at their peak, who would it be? And who would you put them against and why? Okay. That's a That's super a s- fucking solid question, yeah. actually. Oh, uh, damn! I have one that I think would be extremely cool. All right, I'm with that. Um, maybe not like my top match, but I would. I think something like this would be crazy to see. Um, Jason and uh, Jeff Hardy. That one would be good. Both kind of like innovators in what they did. Yeah. Like what Jason still does, obviously. Yeah. Obviously, Jeff's not. You know retired now like he's still in the game but like yeah peak jeff old school days against someone like jason i think would be that really would really be cool really good. um I, I, there's so many i know right? like that's the thing man i'm like i'm trying to narrow it down to one i would love to see a really technical match have someone like uh bret hart and jimmy rafe that would be a good one yeah damn like, there's so many. Yeah, like, there's so many, dude. Like, I'm just trying to, like, throw shit out. Okay, like, and then... <laughs> it's another I'm going to be a mark. Um, it's not that it would be a great wrestling match, probably. But for me, and because if it's my choice... Yeah. I'm going to go back to my childhood for the, this one. I'm, I assuming, throw out, I'm assuming Sting. It is Sting. I may throw out another one, but I would want to see Sting in his prime. Okay. Versus Shawn Michaels in his prime. That would be extremely cool. Because at the time, when both those guys were at their top, top of their game, yeah. Sting was the, the guy in WCW, Shawn Michaels was the guy in WWF. I would like to see those two, or I could really go old school. I wouldn't have minded the scene. At the, when they were both at their big point, Sting and Ultimate Warrior. Yeah. Which was actually going at, to be the damn storyline for the Black Scorpion angle when it fell through, which sucked it. At WrestleMania, Sting wins. I get, I'm not, probably not. I mean, being WWE. No, says, no. Like I'm, I'm saying, know, like your dream know. scenario. My dream scenario is Sting actually wins a match in WWF. Yeah. Or WWE, whatever. Um, I'll tell you what. Um, if we're going like, if we have to bring them back at their prime, like right now. Um. <laughs> I would like to see a four-way okay tag team match. And I want the Young Bucks. All right. The Motor City Machine Guns. Okay. Okay. That's a hell of a start. The new school. Yeah. And I want to see those guys take on the Rock and Roll Express and the Midnight Express. That would be sick. Imagine War Games. Okay, look. Okay. We're going to do a question here in a minute. Let's, let's finish these questions your mom gave us. Okay. Because um, then I, I, I got, we're going to do a dream scenario in a minute. Because um, you said something about it, and we watched the war Dusty games. Roads. Yeah. yeah, that was awesome. Like if you're gonna make your ultimate war games, um, I vote we do these questions and tease the war games. We save it. We tease the war games. Yeah. Okay. Save the war games. We'll tell you in a minute. Um, or if you can choose an all-time cage match, who would you put in the cage match? We're gonna not. It can't be war games. Okay. So just straight cage match. Let's do straight cage match. It has to be one on one. Okay. Straight cage match. Uh, obviously you want high flyers. I do. I want to see someone go off the fucking cage. Okay. I think that has to be part of it. Mine's not going to be high flyers. Really? You're just going to do a straight up... Straight up Like match. guys stuck in the ring just having to fucking go at each other. Yes. Okay. Here you go. All right, let's hear it. In their prime. All right. Triple H. Yeah. In his prime. Versus, in his prime, Ric Flair. That would be pretty sick. 
two guys who in a cage would bleed like damn yeah horror movies in their prime especially because yeah. Flair man like he would bleed and look like he was dead the whole time yeah, yeah. Um, in a cage I feel like those two still show um, and it's got the old school I, got, I, I know I could have went what you're gonna, like what you're thinking but I wanted to do like something not more people jumping off the top of the cage yeah I think you have to have them going off the off the top here's the thing like mine's not really a prime situation with one of them I want young AJ like back X Division AJ okay X Division X Division AJ and hmm see the second part's hard I'm gonna put him with a guy I just know would do something fucking insane Chris Benoit you can't talk about him yes I can <laughs> Because because uh, young AJ is still trying to prove himself. Okay, he's still trying... And he's going to do something fucking nuts. But he's going to be with prime Chris Benoit, who's just, you know, a legend. Fucking, if they want to stop talking about him or not. Someone like him, Benoit goes off the top of the cage for the headbutt. Okay, I'm good with that. I if, think that If I was going to go Benoit... I probably went somewhere different with it than that. Or do it went. If I'm going to throw Benoit in the cage, yeah, I'm adding another stipulation to it. What's the other stipulation? Actually, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, <laughs> this is me, and I know they faced each other. Actually, it's a submission match. I was thinking that too. If with, you're going to have Benoit, with Angle and Benoit, yeah. or Bret Hart. And I was Angle, about to say Bret Hart, Bret and Hart and Benoit. Um, those are all great. Like, yeah, you can't go wrong with any of that shit. Um, I I didn't know when you said AJ. Like I could have went like, all it, kinds of different directions. I, I, like I'm sitting here thinking Seth Rollins. I know I keep talking yeah. about that damn matchup. I want that matchup. But the reason I'm not saying that's because we're gonna get it. That's yeah, gonna happen. We are gonna get that anyway. That'll happen eventually. So War Games. Here's my team. Just kidding. You gotta find out next week. Next week, are gonna be. you will get to hear our um, dream war game scenarios. Mine will be better. Um, you probably right, but still. Well, okay, damn, I was getting in a little argument there, but I, actually, it'll be good either way. Um, anyway, Pro Wrestling South tomorrow night, guys. Road Warrior Animal, Matt Hardy, Eric Dark Storm, uh, and then of course, White Trash Millionaires. Yep. And us, the Till of Count of Five podcast crew, all in the same building. God, we need like a cross promotion shirt. We do. With like both of them on there. That'd be awesome. I gotta get my wife on that shit. Yep. Anyway, go check that out. Um, obviously, we'll be back next week. We're gonna give you the War Game stuff. We're gonna tell you what happened with Road Warrior Animal. And we're gonna talk about the cancer show coming up next week for Lenny Stratton and them. Uh, plus, you know more shit we'll find out what's yeah. going on with everything else maybe WWE will release some more people hopefully by the end the Warriors will be down like two games to none hopefully but Whatever. yeah we're out of here peace peace GG